Good evening. And we will begin shortly. Welcome to tonight's 2023 Senior Night, where we will recognize our 2024 seniors. We will begin with cross country. We will recognize right, our I'm cheerleaders, right our athletic trainers, and our football players. We begin with five cross country runners. Our first senior is Will Blaylock. He is the son of Bai and Tom Blaylock, has attended Heritage Hall since the third grade, and will likely attend TCU next fall. Senior Will Blaylock. Next is Ethan Carr. Ethan is the son of Raya Nile and Gregory Carr. He has attended Heritage Hall since 2012 and is currently undecided where he will attend school next year. Senior Ethan Carr. Our third runner tonight is Marion Dean. He is the son of Shamitra Huff and has attended Heritage Hall since the seventh grade. Marion plans to attend OU. Senior Marion Dean. <laughs> Next, we have Ethan Laguerre. Ethan is the son of Candace and Lance Laguerre and is a Heritage Hall lifer. Ethan will choose between Duke, Michigan, or the University of North Carolina for school next year. Senior Ethan Laguerre. Our final runner of the night is Calvin Zinner. Cal is the son of Chad and Amy Zinner and has been a Charger since his freshman year and plans to attend Indiana University. Senior Cal Zinner. Our next group of seniors tonight is our cheerleaders. First, we have Natalie Bean. She is the daughter of Travis Bean, Erica Knowles, Brad Knowles, and Amy Bean. Natalie is a Heritage Hall lifer. She will choose between Ole Miss or OSU next fall. Senior, Natalie Bean. Next, we have Chloe Michael Counts. Chloe is the daughter of Allison and Jack Counts and is a lifer at Heritage Hall. She will attend either SMU or TCU next year. Senior Chloe Counts. Our third cheerleader this evening is Elise Douglas. She is the daughter of Amy and Scott Douglas and, has, and is a Heritage Hall lifer. Elise will choose between TCU or the University of Tennessee. Senior Elise Douglas. Our final cheerleader tonight is Lily Jackson. She is the daughter of Paul and Marianne Nelson Jackson. Lily has been at Heritage Hall since the fifth grade. She also plans to attend OU next fall. Senior Lily Jackson. Next, we will recognize our two student trainers. First is Avery McCurahan. She is the daughter of Nicole and Jason McCurahan and has attended Heritage Hall since sixth grade. She plans to choose between Oberlin, Northeastern, and Vassar next fall. Oh, come on. Senior Vassar. Avery oh, McCurahan. Next is Maddie Williams. Maddie is the daughter of Jeremy and Lucy Williams and is a Heritage Hall lifer.
She wants to attend either Wellesley College or a school in Colorado. Senior Maddie Williams. Finally, we will recognize our senior football players. First is Andy Bass. Andy is the son of Gabe and Candy Bass and has attended Heritage Hall since his freshman year. Andy will attend OU next year where he plans to play football. Senior Andy Bass. Next is Carter Count. Carter is the son of Allison and Jack Count and is a Heritage Hall wifer. Carter plans to choose between SMU, OU, or TCU next fall. Senior Carter Count. Our next senior is Samuel Fowler. Sam is the son of Jacob and Allie Fowler and is a Heritage Hall lifer. Sam plans to attend OSU or KU next year. Senior Sam Fowler. Now we will recognize Senior Xavier Freeman. Xavier is the son of Jason and Don Freeman and has been at Heritage Hall since seventh grade. Xavier plans to attend Oklahoma next year. Senior Xavier Freeman. Next we have Charlie Aman Ganiabadi. Charlie is the son of Brandy and Ali Ganiabadi. He has been at Heritage Hall since eighth grade and plans to attend Oklahoma State next fall. Senior Charlie Ganiabadi. Now we have Jess Jack Harris IV. Jack is the son of Stephanie and Jay Harris and has been at Heritage Hall since fifth grade. He will choose between OU or Tennessee for college. Senior Jack Harris. Now we have Jordan Harris. Jordan is the son of Eric and Tiffany Harris and has been a Charger since ninth grade. Jordan is currently undecided on where he will attend college next fall. Senior Jordan Harris. Now we recognize Grayson Hume. Grayson is the son of Christopher and Sherry Hume and Laurel Gray. He is a Heritage Hall lifer and plans to choose between Georgia and OU next fall. Senior Grayson Hume. Now we have Edward Johnson. Craig and Aaron Johnson and has been at Heritage Hall since eighth grade. He also is currently undecided on where he will continue his education next fall. Senior Edward Johnson. Now we have Gray Keller. Gray is the son of Julie and Lance Keller and is a Heritage Hall lifer. Gray plans to attend the <laughs> University of Earth. Oklahoma next fall. Keep following him. Senior Gray Keller. I, 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 I wish they didn't know you're doing. I was just saying good job. Now we recognize Callahan Lowry. <laughs> Callahan is the son of Gina and Craig Brown. He is also a Heritage Hall lifer. He plans to attend the University of Oklahoma next year. Senior Holiday and Lowry. Next is Walker Nelson. 
Walker is the son of Michelle and Wade Nelson. He has been at Heritage Hall for three years. Walker plans to attend the University of Oklahoma to continue his education. Senior Walker Nelson. Now we have Alexander Rosell. <laughs> and has been at Heritage Hall since fourth grade. He will choose between SMU or OU next fall. Senior Alexander Roselle. Now is Ben Showalter. Ben is the son of Heather and Connie Showalter and is also a Heritage Hall lifer. He plans to attend TCU next fall. Senior Ben Showalter. Next we have Rashad Smith. Rashad is the son of Rodney and Dee Smith and has been a Charger since his freshman year. Rashad's school choices are OU, OSU, Central Arkansas, or TCU. Senior Rashad Smith. Our next senior is Bladen Vogel. Bladen is the son of Brad and Vicki Vogel and has been at Heritage Hall since fifth grade. Blake will make a choice between OU, Tennessee, or TCU for college next fall. Senior, Blade and Vogel. Our final senior of the night is Stephen Umbro Wilson. Stephen is the son of Linda Wilson. Stephen has been here since his sophomore year.
Welcome Charger fans, Pop Murray Field, Senior Night, Week 10, Final District game before we head into playoffs here. We got 8th ranked Marlowe and then your Heritage Hall Chargers. I'm Max Chard, my partner here again, Steve Chard with me. Should be a good one tonight, Coach. Absolutely, uh, it's good to be back with you, Max. And you know, Marlowe, as we'll feature throughout the game, is a good program, always competitive in Marlowe. Uh, we'll talk more about the Weber family, but uh, Matt Weber, the head coach, has a state title under his belt just two years ago in 2A, and then the, Mar the Outlaws moved on up to three, and 60-something uh, guys out, always a good, healthy program. So I'm sure that they're ready, and this promises to be a great, a great contest for the Chargers. But, you know, back to the home team uh, before we get to the Super Prep feature player. You know, we're, we have clinched our 10th district title in a row. And uh, knock on wood, you know, it's a crazy thing to talk about every week. But in Brett Bogert's head coach ninth season, that brings in a 110 and seven career mark. Um, like we, we laugh every week that that's almost a misprint. But uh, <laughs> um, fans, we're going to take a quick break here as we get ready for the national anthem. I don't want to not stand. I don't want to be talking during that. So we're going to do the national anthem right now. So back to uh, back to the telecast there, Max. Our super prep feature player of the game is Jack Harris, one of my favorites. Uh, Three-year starter on the O-line, two-year starter on the D-line. Uh, he's a team guy first. He really, and you know, my job as dean of students is great. I get to see the kids in all their different aspects of their life. And Jack has changed his body in that weight room with leadership of this staff and Coach Gillum. Uh, it's just he's become a great high school football player. I mean, he's a guy that was free safety in ninth grade. Now he's O-line, D-line, that five technique defensive end type deal in our odd stack, playing, playing on the offensive line. Uh, fast physical de uh, defensive end, voted a captain. No better compliment from your teammates than that. You know, if you recall the state title game uh, last year up at UCO, you know, it was, a, it was certainly a track meet. And Jack had arguably the biggest play, the defensive play of the game with the recovering a fumble uh, as, Mar as Metro was on the move and really turned the tide of that state championship game. And comes in at six foot 225, as you can see, and uh, senior, along with that, the rest of those linemen, we're gonna miss those guys. And, and I got recognized, they got recognized as they earned that recognition here at senior night here at Pop Murray. So um, Jack Harris, our super prep feature player of the game. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back with the uh, Joe Cooper Auto Group keys to victory when we come back to Pop Murray Field. Miller Tippins is an award-winning commercial construction company specializing in building relationships. Our mission is to improve the lives of the people we serve. Exceptional work requires an exceptional team. No matter the scale of your project, we are committed to delivering excellence from our owner-driven team with over 100 years of combined experience. Let us be your A-team. Miller Tippins, your champions of commercial construction. Welcome back, Charger fans. And before we get to our Joe Group Auto Group Keys to Victory, I'm going to swing it over to Coulter Gasker, our resident weather expert. Coulter, what can you say? 
Thanks guys, also I'm a meteorologist, not a weather expert, thanks a lot there Max, but uh, currently it is uh, mid to low 60s with a uh, south wind at about 10 miles an hour, so any balls kicked towards the north end zone will probably be going quite a ways. As we get further into the game, should be dropping into a high, possibly even mid 50s. Thankfully, it's a heck of a lot warmer than it was last week, which is a good thing because now it means our camera operators won't have to deal with frozen hands. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Coulter. Always giving us a great report there. It is a little breezy out there, that is for sure. But uh, so we're going to go ahead and jump right in here. Joe Cooper, Auto Group, keys to victory. First off, shut down their quarterback. Number That's, two, uh, K. K. Gilbert. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good player. Yeah, he is uh, a senior. Right, you know, he's been around this team. I'm sure he was part of that team that won it a couple years ago. Sure, mm -hmm. sure, yeah. They, yeah, like I said, a good, good, good uh, uh, tradition in Marlowe. Uh, defensively, you know, the, the Outlaws are going to stay in cover three for the most part, which the short passing game, that lends itself to uh, the hitch and the slants. You know, they got a little space there to work with. Uh, a little bit harder to get deep on that against cover three, at least uh, on paper. We'll probably have Rashad and Jordan running by him for touchdowns all night, which <laughs> would be great. Um, and then, of course, as we sit here, the last regular season game, uh, this is always you got the scrimmage season, you got the regular season, and the playoff season at Heritage Hall. And so we're ready for season number three within the season, bringing the playoff mentality. And it's, it's neat to see, you know, I, I talk with Coach Bogart a lot, good friend, and, and you know, to see him. They do such a great job of subtly ramping up their intensity and uh, the kids create their own pressure. They don't have to do that here, but ramping up the intensity just a hair each week as we are on the precipice of the playoffs. Uh, we're in again, guaranteed. We're district champs. And, but Marlowe has a lot to play for. I think there's still some, some placing that could occur with an upset of the Chargers tonight. And besides the fact that they are playing Heritage Hall, we'll get their best as we always do. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and that's a – I mean, you know, we don't know who we're going to play yet next week. I know we're waiting to see, depending on results, with McLeod, North Rock Creek, and Kingfisher. I've heard Kingfisher. Yeah, it looks, it looks like a good chance at Kingfisher, which, you know, I, I can't tell you that I'm not looking forward to that. You know, getting, <laughs> right? renewing that rivalry, and uh, it always brings out the best in both teams. And uh, so that would be fun if we play the Jackets next week. But, you know, the good news is we're first. Yep. Mm -hmm. We got so yeah. You'll have our first two games at home before we move on to neutrals and the semis. We get there. Captains for tonight for the Chargers: the aforementioned Jack Harris, along with uh, Xavier Freeman, Rashad Smith, and Jordan Harris are at midfield getting ready to to have the coin toss with the Outlaw captains. Um, Marlowe, though, like always, very big, physical. They will be lined up sound. Though I would imagine that uh, Matt and those guys will do some unbalance and some shifting. Uh, lots, like I said, lots of motion there. Dual threat quarterback in Gilbert, big wide receiver. I know I saw 33, uh, uh, Peyton Edel, 6'4", 200-pounder, great-looking kid, tight end, DN for the, for the Outlaws. So, again, and then um, defensively, mostly a 4-4, like we mentioned, cover three in the back end for the most part. Sound not the fastest team, and, you know, and, and that's where we hope to exploit them, not uh, – that's not a good thing to play the Chargers if, if you are a step slow. Yeah. And this is a team that they were they were undefeated going into last week, and they had that tough game against Sulphur 14-13. Yeah, I, I, yeah and, and it, it, sounded like, it sounded like that was a very – I don't know if it's controversial. I, don't want, I wasn't there, so it would be unfair to say that. But they were ahead the majority of that game. Mm -hmm. uh, they got, a, I think, a big punt return for Sulphur, a couple of tough penalties, and, and able to, to kind of steal one were the Bulldogs. But we know from watching them last week right here – that they're a big and physical team, and, and certainly no fluke that they beat the Outlaws, but obviously not a lot of difference between Sulphur and, and the Marlowe Outlaws with right. a one-point mm -hmm. difference. You'd hate to do the transitive thing, but uh, Marlowe will be ready, and, and uh, you know how it is here at Heritage Hall, Max. Nobody, no coaches have to motivate too hard to get ready for the uh, Chargers. Right, no, not at all. <laughs> um, we are 2-1 and one all time, you know, going back to uh, against Marlowe. 2022 last year I mean I was um, I went down to Marlow and watched that game and 31-7 doesn't sound that bad but that was pure domination Marlow did not have a first down on our first defense period and then we put some of the some of the younger kids in and they moved it a little bit um, and then uh, Jordan had a big interception five tackles so all this familiar names Jack Harris uh, Z Freeman Ganyabadi had five tackles each uh, I almost said Lee Welker that's 
Cal's dad, <laughs> Lee, he was also a kicker and a, a great charger. Uh, and Cal had a Cal had a field goal down at Plainview, where he was our player of the game that game. And then in 2018, we we blanked the the Outlaws 42 zip uh, in round one of the playoffs, which I remember that one too. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, you know, certainly the Chargers are favored, and you know, I think. I know that the uh, the Outlaws have their full attention, the staff and the players. So I hope I'm hoping for great things, which we get so spoiled watching these Chargers. Uh, you know, and let's let's be honest, our uh, watching Andy Bass is exciting. He's yeah. he's must watch TV, isn't he? And, yeah, uh, he really is. You know, he's a great athlete at any level, but a kid like that that's legitimately a 4-4, the fastest schoolboy in Oklahoma by his 100 meter time last spring. Um, to put that on a 3A football field is is electric, and and it's going to translate to Norman next year for the Sooners. So uh, really exciting to get to watch Andy every week as he and so many other great guys. I mean, you can't throw bombs if you don't have anyone to go get it, right? Right. And Jordan Harris and Rashad Smith are just having great seasons. And Rashad, you know, would have told you three years ago. I don't know if I'm ever playing football. He's turned in this year and last year has had a great season, and and uh, obviously he's one of our best basketball players as well. Yeah. And a couple of guys out for the Chargers in Bladen Vogel, Edward Johnson, Klein Ruder, all you know, all guys who get a lot of minutes for this team out tonight. But I'm sure you know, you know where you are going into playoffs. You're not too worried. You want to make sure you have them healthy come come week 11, I guess you'd say. Well, agreed. And you know what? I, I want to give a shout out to my man Bladen Vogel. Old Bladen is, is a great kid, and uh, really, is, it's hurting the Chargers that he's not in his outside linebacker position, and really, and also helps with the depth at running back. But um, Bladen uh, had some an illness a couple weeks ago and it was really not doing well and and missed some school and and, and uh, I'm hoping to see Bladen back in uniform maybe next week. Um, but he's just not quite ready to go. But it's just, Bladen has fought injury after injury and then he was having a great season and then caught that that illness a, a couple weeks ago and had to miss a couple more games. I mean this is the third game he's had to miss in a row. So Bladen, we're thinking of you. You're here with us. I'm glad to see Bladen at senior night and. And hopefully back in full uniform and, and helping helping our Chargers uh, through the playoff run. Absolutely, and looks like we're just taking the field now. Chargers will receive the first half kick. Jordan Harris back deep to receive. I did not notice who won the toss. A lot of times, Coach Berger will take the ball, so who knows? But we are getting the ball first, one way or the other, mm-hmm. right? Yep, Barrett Travis, Jordan Harris, and Carter Counts back deep for the Chargers to receive the kick. That's that's three cats that can run back there, but yeah. <laughs> Those guys are all all part of the uh, track team. Mm-hmm. And uh, Kate Gilbert, the quarterback for Marlowe, will be kicking it off. There you go. I think do it all. Yeah, I'd say. I know that our friends from KRXO are doing this game on the radio tonight, the game of the week. Um, statewide radio. So, uh, wherever you are, I hope you're buckled up and ready to go. Marlowe Outlaws, Heritage Hall Chargers, and we're off. Good kick. Yeah. To the end zone. Touchback. Yeah, well, with the win. Huh? Yeah. My hunch is that Marlowe won the toss and defer. Mm-hmm. So, this Charger offense, which has been so special all year, will take over first and 10 on the 25. Andy Bass and crew. Yeah, really, the guy that's really been good all year but has just come alive in the last three games is tailback Barrett Travis. Uh, he, he has really gone crazy the last three games. So, dual threat back there. Bass looks to throw a first pass. Got him. And, you know, the cool part about that is we – Wow, breaks it free. Well, and he said cover three. And these coaches for Heritage all don't miss a beat. And the corner is going to be seven, eight yards off. Uh, that's like a handoff for Andy Bass, so we'll take that as long as you want to give it. Right. So, so big first down there. First and ten from their own 38, Bass in the gun. Pressure and taken down. That was number 33. Yeah, that's who I was just talking mm-hmm. about. I never seen him play, but <laughs> yeah, that body was meant to play football. Oh, uh, yeah. Peyton uh, Edel. Yeah, and he he got right back there and then some. It's hard to sack Andy. I mean, you know, I think he was – that got on him so quick he, he didn't have time to, to peel out of there. But loss huge battle. loss right there. Great job by the Outlaws. The loss of, uh, what, six, 12, 15 yards there. Yeah. Second and long now. 
Bass looks to pass again. He's brought down again. Number 21, Jace Hunt, another senior, six foot 198. They play good defense down there, you know. Uh, held Sulphur to the same amount of points we did. So, so all of a sudden, Max, we've got a third and 29. Yeah. <laughs> See what Coach Bogart has in mind if he keeps it short or wants to take a crack at it. So he's going to yeah, give it to your best player and don't fumble. Well, we're pretty gutsy at Heritage Hall, but I don't think we're going for this one. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, tip your hat after the first play to the outlaw defense on that series, huh? Right, absolutely. Got pressure to a really quick stop, only a minute and a half off the clock. And... Uh, Well, and it's a, they're ready now, Charlie and company in the O-line. Mm -hmm. I think he tipped it. I think so too, but a good charger hop. It's going to trickle down to about the 45, 44. That might be one of the teams you could say Heritage Hall's not very good at. It's punt team because they don't do it. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, they punt about twice a month. So uh, good field position here for the Outlaws for their initial offensive possession. Starting lineup for the for the Chargers on defense, defensive ends, Avery Freeman and Jack Harris on the ends, and then that, nose tackle that, Charlie hey, on your body. I, I, let's let's stop right there, brother. You don't want to um, call call Z. Did you call him Avery? I said Xavier. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's a big sister's name, right? <laughs> I was like, I said Xavier. Yeah, yeah. That front group's really good, strong. They had a great game last week. Charlie Gagne body had his best game, but I think he played all year last week. To the give. Number 11, Clint Layden. According, to this, is, according to this, is a ninth grader. Yeah. First carry of the game to a ninth grader. Okay. Second and nine now. Yeah, we're back in the gun. Not in a rush. I don't blame him. Outlaws smart. Just the hitch wide open. And good pitch and catch there from Gilbert to Jacob Croson. I must I see two twenties on the lineup. <laughs> Different names. So Well, it's gotta be Croson, six foot one seventy junior over the ninth grade right now. Yeah. First and ten Barlow. Dual numbers, man. <laughs> So fresh set of downs inside Georgia territory on the 41-yard line. Yeah, good. You know, when you make them lose uh, 29 yards or 19 yards on the, on the possession, you're going to end up in good field position. Yeah, kind of flipped it. There's there's one of the movement. That's an unbalanced look we have into this direction. Probably coming this way, and here we go. Uh oh, that's oh, a that's a lot pass. Get it. And they did. It is going to be marked there. Yeah. It looked like that screen was going to Krausen and well, I think he, yeah. I think Gilbert he might have uh, my, the offense for the Marlin needs to back up. Uh, he he was getting good pressure, so you know he went yeah. in and got rid of it. That was dangerous. That was a very dangerous play there. But that takes a, a good hop for the Chargers. That's a that's a scoop and score there. Mm -hmm. Second and sixteen now. Trips to the bottom of the screen. Gilbert in the gun. Back to pass again. He's, yes, he's sir. brought down and sacked. That's Barrett Travis. Yep. In that raw position, uh, coming off the edge, and, and well, it's a dream shot when the quarterback's back is to you, and you on an untouched blitz. He, is, he has come alive, man. That young man, Junior Barrett Travis, got a lot of great football left in that kid. So, a uh, very similar offensive possession. After one first down to the Chargers' first possession. Uh -huh. Third and 23 for Marlowe. 29 for the Chargers, but they're going to drop back and pass. Gilbert throwing Great, deep. Good, good job. everyone. Yeah. Carter counts. That's, that is textbook cover, zone coverage technique by Carter. But to the sideline, running, and in that, in that zone call, there's no way somebody gets behind you. 
and Carter was just jogging with that kid. You know, no problem. So great job, Carter, and the Charger defense going to force a punt. Uh-oh. I'll start. We're going to back it up five and do it again. False start. Look, almost exactly what it was. It's going to be third and 28. Fourth and 28 for them. We had fourth and 29. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's Terrence Johnson back deep for yes. the Chargers. Yeah, the last couple weeks he's been catching punts and, and doing a good job. Going to fair catch that one. Yep, good job, Terrence. It's fair caught about the 18. One of the most underrated skills in football, somebody that can catch punts. Uh, that's, a, that's serious pressure. And nobody's better in the Big 12 than our for, our fellow Charger alumni, Max, and uh, Gab Freeman. Yeah, he's electric back there. For the Sooners, <laughs> and he is fearless. He comes up last week catching them. I'm like, oh, my gosh. There's <laughs> he's old Gab's still fun to watch. <laughs> So Chargers possession number two here. Let's so hopefully get things going, in this case, to the south. That's going to pass again, yeah, that quick throw to Harris. Sure. Just yep. Take it. Mm -hmm. uh, great velocity. Got balls coming out of Andy's hand, man. Really good. So, um, yeah, we, like our weatherman Coulter mentioned, you got a pretty stiff south breeze still. Um, but the good guys, that doesn't bother them. Uh, a guy like Andy Bass, that's not going to affect him. Sometimes deeper, deep balls are harder to throw in the wind than, than those short uh, hitch and slants. Trips to the top. Travis back there with Bass. He's going to pass again. Oh, he's oh, got deep. him. He's got him. Yep. Yeah, Boston. Yes, sir. Yes. Boston full with big gain. First down, Chargers. What a great read by Bass, and then the really hard part in the soup in there, Boston Fuller, who's great for Boston. He's worked his tail off to become a really good player himself, and, and uh, that was a gutsy catch going up in traffic and pulling it down. Wait, hold on. We need somebody on. There we go. Gonna get can roll out. Looking. Oh, just out of the reach of Boston there, huh? Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> Andy probably could have run for 20 yards, but I appreciate him staying in the script. <laughs> Second and 10 now, and the only, the only time we've seen them run the ball was on third and 29. Won't be the last. No, nope. they're going to Barrett Travis going to get the ball tonight. I know yeah. that. Got corner of a a dime look in here, a little prevent there. Straight run to Bass. Keep, we're going to get a few. Close to a first down. Don't think he quite got it. No, nope. only third and short. Yep. Like third and about one. That was out of bounds of the 7 11 left in the first third here. Two. Third and two. Chargers. I highly imagine two down territory. 100%. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's just go ahead and get it here. Kind of a pistol look there, Max. All set. Give it to Travis there. Yeah, good job. Bounce through, yeah. Hillman Brown was in there at fullback on that play. Hillman, another good looking junior. You can see Rhett Davis chogging back on the, he's in and out all evening, and uh, Rhett has really become a pass-catching threat uh, for the charge. Had a touchdown last week and another huge catch in the fourth quarter last week. Rhett has great hands. Bass going to roll out the opposite way. Got Welker. Mm. Yep. You know, on that one, Andy, just just a tad tardy on that delivery. Uh, Rhett, uh, uh, Cal Welker broke open just a hair earlier. If you get him in just a little earlier, he's going to have a better chance of that one. But very close, second and 10 now. Chargers. Another dual number there for Marlowe. Two number 10s, <laughs> and they're about the same. <laughs> and, and they don't have 100 players, huh? <laughs> but you only order some numbers. I get it. Yep. Strips to the top, Bass can pass. That was bad. bad down the line, yeah. Yep. 
So the defensive line for Marlowe making their impact early. Absolutely they are. For the Chargers. So again, still two down, or excuse me, four down territory, Max. Third and 10 for the Chargers on the Outlaw 28. Davis in an H-back look for the Chargers. <laughs> That's makes one man miss. Throw it to the end zone, overthrown. Looked like it was number eight. It's Carter there. Knowles. Yep. Uh, one thing about it, if your receiver keep working, Andy Bass can buy time all day. But pretty good back end defense there by the Outlaws brings up fourth and ten. Um, it is with the wind, or excuse me, it's into the wind, so field goal not going to happen here. Although you look over at the flag and all of a sudden they're laying down. We'll see what Coach Bogart has on fourth and ten here. Trips to the top again. We had that big play on. Pass. Looks like he's going to keep it. Can he stay up? I think he got there. Well, no, just, man, just pick no. up a five. So mm -hmm. the Outlaws turn us over on downs there. Uh, I, I, I know Coach Coach Booker's frustrated on that one. Maybe uh, we never speculate too much. Maybe. Maybe Andy gave up just a little early on that one uh, and took off, but, you know, he, he's earned the right to operate how he wants, and, and uh, a lot of times he picks that up. So uh, let's go defense. Let's do it again. Here's Gilbert back there, this time with number 28, Jonathan Bright, and a give to Bright. Boy, Charlie is really, yeah, he is. That's, uh, that's why you get in that bench press, big Charlie. <laughs> He's over a 300 pound bencher, and he needed every bit of it right there. Got that, tackled him high, and uh, but he was ready. Charlie having a great season. Second and six now for his Charger defense. Yeah, Marlowe definitely taking their time. Rhett Davis in there at the bandit position, I'm at, I think, yeah. And uh, so that's good to see Rhett playing defense. And a little further out, he's played some five technique, I know. Gilbert going to keep. And Rhett Davis finished that tackle up along with Charlie oh. on your body. Marlowe picked up the first down, the keeper. Yeah, they sure did. I thought he was a little short, but he got it. So 540 and counting here. No score at Pop Murray against a tough-minded Marlowe Outlaw squad. Very Penn State-esque uniforms. <laughs> yeah, like carbon copy. I don't think that's accidental. It's a good call. Good, good read yeah. by Gilbert there. And uh, uh, going to get a hold, I think, on Marlowe on the back side of that. Uh, yeah, holding the preliminary call. Chargers are going to take that, I imagine. Um, you know, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be accurate to to only do it on the other way. I, I hate that call because that, that holding call occurred about 20 yards from the action and uh, didn't affect the play at all, but obviously we'll take it. Um, Big call, though, makes it first and 17 for the Outlaws. Getting inside of five minutes here in the first. Great night for football. The winds have died. 60s, perfect night. There's that tight end flip again. No, but yeah. Great job there. Mm -hmm. The Outlaws, well, the, the front surge right there, Charlie, Jack. Oh, doggone it. Cal Lowry's shoulder is down again. Hopefully he can get it back. He has been a warrior all season with that left shoulder, and, and he's uh, come off. 
So that'll put Hillman Brown, who played his first action at Mike Backer last week, and, and number nine Hillman, he looks the part for sure, and he really had a great week uh, against Sulphur, played well. So might have found something there for the future in Hillman Brown at the Mike. Gilbert going to roll it to his right. Quick throw, number 19 there. Cut through, good, good gain there. Yeah, got a lot of that. Got a yeah. lot of that back, mm -hmm. and then some. So, gonna bring up what Max about a third and four. Well, no, third and six. Yep. You bring pressure here. If I know Mark Adams, I would imagine so. <laughs> Looks like Barrett's coming again off the edge there. Yep. Yeah, they, you know, Coach Weber and them, they'll try to get out of that. Maybe if they have a screen game here, maybe Mark called the blitz off. He didn't. He brought the mic, but he did not bring Barrett. Hey, that's a dime right there. That's a great throw, yes. Great throw for a first down completion. Number 13, Barrett Gage, who said his name before. Yeah, a lot of familiar names. That's Gage is a, one of the coaches. Uh, I see Coach Weber's son is also on the roster. Um, if that hadn't changed, it had been stable down there. I think Coach Gage is defensive coordinator. A little miscommunication there. Well, the back went the wrong way. Yep. But so, so smart move by Gilbert, you know, throw it out and live another day. Right. Second 10 now, Marlowe absolutely content to take their time here, keep the ball out of Andy Bass's hands. Well, yeah, this is, you know, if you can possess the ball, that's the best way to defend Andy Bass, isn't right. it? Right. Another keeper again for Gilbert. He stayed up before he fell down. Did for he a lose the ball? More. No, I, okay. Okay. I deceiving. It's another third down now, third and two for Marlowe. It's like a unit change for the Outlaws. No, there's a, yeah. You get a false start. Yeah. So you get a false start on the Outlaws. A big false start making yeah. third and seven now. So I know we were planning on, we were thinking Kingfish, they're down seven nothing early against Anadarko. We've got both the games pulled up here. And the cloud up seven nothing on Mount St. Mary both in the first quarter still. It's, uh, it just changed 13, actually. <laughs> we don't even know who we're playing, so. Yeah. A big third down here for the Charger defense. Our coach, see what Coach Weber has dialed up. Not much to do. That Cal Welker just came in for Rhett Davidson. I bet Cal will be coming off the, the edge here. Right back there with Gilbert. Seeing trips to the top of the screen. Yeah, he comes He's going to pass. Yep. B gap. And yeah, Jack Harris. Jack Harris got him. Massive play. Just makes plays, man. That kid just makes plays. He and Charlie Ganyabadi helped finish up on that, clean it up, and going to bring up a punting situation for the Outlaws. No question there. Fourth and nine and in your own territory in a tie game. So let's punt it. Mm -hmm. Might want to scoop back a little. There he goes. 
Johnson back there again, and it's over his head. That's a good punt. Yeah. I'm thinking if that's going to go out of bounds. Really good punt, about the eight. Let's see what the this seven yeah, yard seven. line. Mm -hmm. uh, so minute seven to go in the quarter. No score here at Pop Murray. Chargers third possession. See if we can make some hay here. Good field position flip there for the Outlaws. Strips to the top, Bass and Travis back in the back in the backfield. Yeah. Pistol look there. No fullback, I guess. Oh, goodness whoa, whoa. gracious. They say it was backwards? I guess they they did. Now it would be a touchdown for Marlowe. That was not a backward pass. Coach Bugger doesn't seem to like it either. They're, that's going to stick. I mean, they're changing out footballs and PAT teams on the field for the mm -hmm. Outlaws. <laughs> that was unbelievable. That was not a lateral. Woo. Marlowe's going to. No, no. <laughs> okay, yeah. Kick the PAT here. Timeout. Heritage Hall. Hard to tell from up here, but look forward. But good play with Marlowe sticking with it, knowing that if it, if it could it go been, either way. If it had been any backward, it would have been in the end zone because of where Andy was. Right. The replay, I don't think, but we have replay. That's a pretty big one there. Oh, well, we have a second. Yeah. Take him. Now we're to the PAT now. Marlowe after the timeout. Marlowe with six on the board on the Defensive score. Uh, he line. missed it, I believe. Okay. So a line drive right yeah. through, yeah. It's hard to tell from here. Mm -hmm. So the first points of the game come on defense. Marlowe scores the first 7 nothing. The 57 seconds left in the... First quarter, we're going to go ahead and stick here since so we have a minute left. Take a look at a couple of sponsors again. We'd like to thank Metromark Real Estate for their sponsorship this season. Established in 1978, Metromark is a pillar of the Oklahoma real estate community. Visit metromarkrealestate.com to, to connect with an agent today. Metromark Real Estate, helping you buy and sell with confidence. Real quick, always want to give a shout-out to the Barking Lot, Ninth Street Barking Lot. Visit them online at nightstreetbarkinglot.com to schedule your bark bus pickup from the Heritage Hall campus. Coach Kyle Gillum looks forward to spoiling your pups at his first class facility in downtown OKC. Ninth Street Barking Lot, home of the bark bus. Pretty cool deal. Um, so, first quarter about to come to an end, but the Outlaws get on the board on defensive score on a what was called a backward pass from Andy Bass, who was picked up and kind of fallen on in the end zone by the Outlaws. It's you know, again, we don't have a good angle, so I'm not going to say they blew the call, but I do know that it's hard if you don't pick it up and run it in and the ball's laying in the end zone, then it has to that, – that's hard to imagine. But 7 uh, nothing. however you want to slice it. So that one also carried to the end zone for touchback. This time the Charger offense to take over on the 25. Or the 20, I'm thinking college here. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
Okay, Charger offense, let's go. Here we go. First down. That's going to keep it up the middle. Stays on his feet. Whoa, and fumble. He dropped it. Oh, my oh, goodness. No. Marlon might have it. No signal yet. Andy Bass just came out of the pile and they signaled Marlowe ball. Andy walked out of the pile with the ball and they signaled Marlowe. That reminds me of OU Oregon years ago, right? <laughs> Remember that. Alan Patrick walked out of the pile with the ball on the onside and they gave it to the Ducks. Some, not, not much different than that. I'm not sure what happened. I don't know what else to go on if you come out of the pile with the ball. Right. Marlon's going to take over first and 10, the 30. Pitch. It's going to throw yeah, it. Yeah, pass. Carter, look up. Pick it. Pick it, Carter. Oh, did he get he, it? Yeah, He baby. did, yes. So right back to the Charger offense. Carter counts. We've talked about Carter a couple times this year. Every year it seems that there's a senior that comes out of not nowhere, Carter has been playing, mostly kicking. Uh, and we know that Carter can absolutely fly and he's become a really great high school corner and no bigger play in his career than that one right there with a big momentum with the Outlaws for sure. And uh, Carter Counts squashes that with a huge pick. Chargers deep down in there, but we'll take the ball. That's gonna keep it again. Splits up the middle for looks like looks like he's gonna get the first down. Yeah, he did. He's one guy from breaking knees. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's gonna happen. Just a matter of time, not if but when. A balanced formation here for the Chargers. Got him. Yep. The first and five for the Chargers, and like we said, they can take if they don't if they don't get too bored, they can throw a hitch route every single play if they want to. <laughs> and I don't blame them. They do their homework. I mean, number five's not running with Jordan. Jordan's one of the fastest kids in 3A, if not Oklahoma. So he's going to back up smartly. Right. Twenty-four's gonna go. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, and there's yep. your quarter. So, at the end of one, the Marlow Outlaws on top of the Chargers, seven nothing. But the Charger offense on the move. We'll be right back. Quarter number two. Oklahoma's known for its lakes, farm ponds, and creeks. And whether you take a highway or a dirt road to get there, Joe Cooper Jeep gets you to your destination. Right now, buy any Jeep for 10% below employee pricing. Plus, Joe Cooper always gives you more for your trade-in. And remember, we'll beat any dealer's price on a new Jeep by $500, or we'll give you $10,000. Only here at Joe Cooper. I love you, Oklahoma. Welcome back, Pop Murray Field. Start of the second quarter here. Chargers down seven nothing. Get the ball here. We've got a we got a replay max of that great pick by Carter Counts. Right. Go ahead and run it here. Here it is coming up right here. 
Tried a trick play, and Carter never – he just stayed with his man. Yep. Good Way to kid. hang on to it well, right there. Well, yeah, great yeah. job by the Marlowe kid trying to be, become defender. and Good strong hands there by Carter. To huge momentum swinger for the Chargers right there. Yep. Back to action here. Good read by yep, Andy. Bass going to keep it and throw it out wide to Travis. That's Carter Knowles. Oh, that's Knowles? Yeah. Oh, Number eight. Looked like, looked like two <laughs> from uh -huh. way back here. <laughs> Great execution there. That is not easy. Great throw and catch. Carter Knowles. Another junior that's got a lot of upside. Carter is long and he can move. Uh, he's got some great football days ahead of him as well. So first down, Just no need to panic here and they will not do it. Coach Bogart and them will not. We were behind last week to Sulphur. It's a bad gonna pass now again. Oh, he's got, yeah, he's he's got, got him, Jordan. yeah. I was looking at it. He oh. has enough juice on it. <laughs> okay. Jordan Harris going to stay on his feet. Touchdown, Chargers. The strike from Andy Bass. <laughs> and, and <laughs> Jordan, he is so fast. Because he, he was his back to the end zone and standing still and goes from 0 to 60 and just ran away from those kids. Uh, yep. You know, pick your poison with the Chargers. You want to single them up on the edge, you're going to get burned. And after the first series, really great job by Coach Freeman and our linemen and Coach uh, Cook to make a few adjustments there and, and slow that pass rush down. After after that first series, it looks like normal. I mean, just kind of right. think they you know give Marlo credit. They came out and punched us in the mouth a little bit and and then got us got us going, got our attention, and now we protecting well and uh, as they've done for two years. So not right. not surprised. Could say you awoke in a sleeping giant. There you go. <laughs> Cal Welker in for the PAT. Almost blocked, but up and looks like he was good. Yep. Walker Nelson on the hold. Great job. So 7 7 Chargers. Just a couple plays into the second quarter. Now, it's so important for the psyche of the team, and Heritage Hall does such a great job. When they do need to, they answer mm -hmm. and uh, with vigor. And right there, another, <laughs> there's the play of the, the replay of the bomb on the big screen there. Boy, that's awesome to have a replay on our big screen. Goodness yeah, right? gracious. Woo! That looks <laughs> awesome. That's HD quality on that nice new scoreboard here at Pop Murray Field. Well, that ought to uh, excite the defenders and, you know, same kids for the most part. But, <laughs> you know, it uh, score always – Gets Big Mo back in your in your corner. Take a second to read one. Yeah. Here we go. Carter Count's gonna kick off for the Chargers. Great song, Beastie Boys playing Kick It <laughs> on the kickoff. I love it. Line drive well, kick from Carter. Um, well, and uh, good return there. Yeah. After, yeah, that was number uh, 11. Uh, mm -hmm. Lane, or excuse me. Clint Layden. Clint Layden, the ninth grader. Great job there to, to corral that and uh, not let that get by him. It was a tough one. Bo Butler and, and Carter have been sharing the kickoff duties. Uh, Carter did that one. But the uh, Outlaws, first and 10 on their own 30 here with 11.34 to go in the half. Yeah, not surprising McLeod. One of our possible first round opponents all over the mountain, 26 nothing. There you go. First down, 10 Marlowe, the 30. Good pickup, good first down pickup there. Jonathan Bright. Another junior. Look big, it says six foot one seventy. Good run there. No huddle here by the Outlaws on a second and four. Okay. 
go in and get their signals, then you'll see Gilbert come down and give it to the line. It's been the every play thing. Second four now, low snap. Charlie Gagne body, first contact there, along with Hillman Brown. They're going to give him a half yard there. I'm not sure how, but anyway, <laughs> third and short now for the Outlaws. Looks like it's third and a long three. Big play here, huh, Max? Yeah, right. Big score from the Chargers, tie it back up. And getting back on the field quickly would be big momentum-wise. Timeout, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. Timeout. Well, they're about to run out of time on the play clock. So, Marlowe, each team has taken one timeout here in the half. Big thank you to Stanley's Graduation, offering Jostens products and conveniently located in Edmond. For all of your high school grad needs, class rings, letter jackets, announcements, and championship rings, celebrating moments that matter, Stanley's Graduation Services. Call or text them at 405-607-4343 or visit them at jostens.com. Come back now. Big third and three here. Right in the backfield with Gilbert. Gilbert's going to keep it, yeah, and that's it's not going to get there, I don't think. Yeah, it is. Well, see where they mark it, I want to say. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, they, they call it a first down. Saying a first down, so good pick up there from Gilbert. Just barely gets the first down. I mean, they didn't even measure. Right? Our coaches are a little miffed by that. Uh Too tight, two back there, a power formation all the way. Going nowhere on first down. Yeah, Graham Murphy, we, a lot of guys playing linebacker. Talked to Mark Adams about that. And Graham, another good young player, was in on that stop for no gain. He of the Olympic level high jump. <laughs> yeah. State champ, jumping about 6'10". See if the outlaws want to open this up a little. Did we jump? Oh, no, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Procedure. I, I didn't see that well. So, second and 15 now after the legal procedure there from the outlaws. Smart. I mean, like you said, the best way to defend Andy Bass is having him sitting over here. Right. And why? Why would you want to get in a hurry? Got a tie game. Just how they like it. That's a hold. My goodness. Yeah, they call there it. There it is. Yep. They, yeah. Counts Rhett, pushing out of bounds. Rhett Davis draws a hold there. That one's going to go back. It's not from there, though. Mm -mm. 
Yeah. Yeah. So. It's going to be second and really long now. Second, I believe, 25. Yep, second and 25 now for the Outlaws, so behind the chains, which is never a good thing when you're playing this Charger defense. Clock continues to roll, getting down to eight minutes now. I wonder why he went out of bounds on that run. Yeah, that's weird. You gotta throw deep. Oh, to another one, Counts. Carter. Oh, oh my gosh! Counts is trying to chase him down. He's tackled at about the seven. Oh, wow, he just Ooh. caught him in the in between look. I mm. thought Par Carter was gonna pick that, and unfortunately he didn't. So, uh, big pickup for the Outlaws there. They're gonna have first and goal on about the seven. Yeah, a big pickup there on second and really long. Yeah, second 25 is. Mm -hmm. So Marlowe in business. Come on, D. Bow up here and get a stop. Oh, great, yep. great penetration there yep. by, he's on the ground, didn't make the play, but Charlie Gagne body was the key to that play. He was two yards deep. Absolutely blew it up and made the bat go sideways. The Chargers win the play. Right. But he did pick up two and a half yards about on that. Physical runners for the Outlaws, no surprise. Yeah, bounced it back after it got hit by Ghania Body on that first hit. the toss to, I haven't seen, 15. Yeah. Yeah, that was Hudson Morgan, I'm sure. Tossed in the end zone, touchdown, outlaws. Well, our break, Ridley, I don't know, he's an anchor. You're right, Max. Hudson Morgan with the score, and just like that, the outlaws are back on top. Try to add the PAT to take a 14-7 lead here. 6.51 to go in the half. Got a ball game on our hands, folks. Mm -hmm. That one looks like, yeah, you know, up and good also. So 14-7 Outlaws, 6.51 to go. Let's go ahead and take a quick break. We'll be back for the kick return. 14-7 Outlaws. Oklahoma City, I'm Miles Perry, and I want you to listen to my show, Super Prep Live. Super Prep Live takes an in-depth look at the Oklahoma high school student athlete and what makes he or she become great at what they do. Super Prep Live can be heard on OKC's CBS Sports Radio 105.3 and Instagram Live. Make sure you tune in and learn about the next great student athlete on Super Prep Live with me, Miles Perry. Deputy Stuff grew out of our love of historic preservation and architectural salvage of building materials. Whether you're looking for doors, light fixtures, hardware, reclaimed lumber, statues, plants, or home decor, Dead People Stuff is the perfect piece for your next project. And the Dead People Stuff family is growing. Come check out our 40,000 square foot compound featuring a brewery, barbecue, tattoo shop, barber shop, and a cat cafe. We pay you cash to haul off your trash. Help us save history one piece at a time. Back to action here, just in time. Gilbert just about to kick it away. Yeah, Chargers had him at third and 20, second and 25, and, and they hit a big one on us and get a chance to return it here finally. That's our that's who Take we want to have it. Oh, Barry yeah. Travis, one guy away probably from busting that one. But nonetheless, a great return to the 41 yard line of the Outlaws. Good starting field position for Bass in the offense. Yeah, shorter kick into that breeze. Mm -hmm. 
So looks like a little ninja here, sort of like ninja. Team look here and oh, they, they, the outlaw, the, the engaged in those guys called timeout for the Marlowe. Interesting look there from the Chargers on first down. Well, sometimes that's enough reason to have that stuff in is it makes people waste timeouts. Yeah. Three Points Land is proud to support the Chargers, and the Chargers are proud to have them on our team. Three Points Land is leading the industry in land services for energy innovation. Visit threepointsland.com to learn more. Big shout out to Hanson Aesthetics, OKC's leading medical spa, offering beauty your way with all of the latest non-surgical aesthetic treatments. Visit them at beautyyourwayok.com to schedule your appointment today. It's a tough email, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 3A2 is represented very well in the top 10. You got Heritage Hall, Sulphur, Marlowe, and Paul's Valley all ranked. And Plainview pretty solid themselves, beat these Marlowe guys last week. Yep. Bass the keeper. Good first down gain of about nine. Second and one now, good pickup. Six and chains left in the first half here, been quick one. Bass gonna keep it again, he's got speed. We know that, and falls forward after a really big gain, another first down. Yeah, he, down, he yeah. I don't think he fell, I think he ran smooth over. Yes, two kids. He, <laughs> yeah. Then a little bit of, I, I'm glad to say we didn't partake too much, but a little bit of uh, some stuff in social media this week. Uh, nothing terrible, but I think it got the attention of the quarterback. I do know that uh, with a little bit of extracurricular. So the give to Travis there, yep, up the middle. Good tackle, but not before the game's about eight. Second three, good pick up by Travis there on first down. That's going to throw now. Yeah. yeah. I, there you go. Has him. Yep. Has Jordan. He's got speed down to, to the eight. No, no. Oh, I, oh, oh, yeah. Gosh. It's the 13. <laughs> Good ad lib there, just backyard football there, kind of an out route on the initial start, and then uh, Andy rolled and they had to get pulled up, so he just bow tied it back to the inside, and nice pick up there for a first down. The Charger offense moving pretty smoothly here. Just gonna keep it, yeah. <laughs> just, uh, I call that the middle school play, snap it to the fast kid and take <laughs> off, right? That's what, uh, but hey, it's very, very effective, and. Uh, why not, right? Right. Pick up a seven there by Andy. Four and a half minutes here in the first half and counting. See what Chuck Shepard signals in from Coach Bogert's playbook. Bass is trying to outrun. Wow. He, wow, he fell over everyone. I think he might have chucked him to again he, uh, into the end zone. <laughs> he's so bad. You know, it helps when you squat 600. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, he's, uh, he's quite a specimen. So great job there by the Chargers. Again, answering back after a Marlowe score immediately after. So PAT pending to tie this ball game back up. 
watching the play, I didn't think there was any way that Bass was going to get in the end zone there. I don't know. He just great vision. He picked his little spot there to, to get across, and doesn't take him long. Right. Cal on Cal Walker on the extra point. Got it. So 14 all now. But you know the beauty of this, and there's a replay of Andy's touchdown on the big board. Uh, like you said, Max, it didn't look like defended. It was defended pretty well by Amarlo, really. Mm -hmm. He just split him and used his power to, to kind of go through him yeah. for a big touchdown there. So 14 all here at Pop Murray. A good ball game. Just not a whole, you know, got some similar feel to last week, really. Yeah. Uh, it's right where we were at halftime with Sulphur last week. Kind of what I imagined, kind of what I expected, really, is going into this game. Yeah, no, you know, Marlowe, Chargers either, not a lot of mistakes. That's that's why you have good records. I mean, this is Matt Weber's fifth season at Marlowe, and he's 45 and 13, um, which is great. You know, the, the Outlaws won it three times in their history, 59 way back, 64, and then, as he mentioned, in 21 under Matt's leadership. Mm-hmm. While we're sitting here, give a shout out to the Weber family. It's a, one of the great Oklahoma football families. Dad, Joe, great coach, Davis, and St. Mary's, and state titles, multiple. Older brother, Jody, as we, a lot of the Chargers know, multiple titles at Davis, and we played him every year. A couple of great games with Wes Welker and the guys back in the day. So there we go. Yeah, Jonathan Bright found a holder on the sideline, got up for a good gain. One of the guys that we wish we had playing is the guy who ran out there to get that T. Klein Reuter. Um, unfortunately, I think he is shut down for the season. And, uh, but Klein, a good player, another guy that's a good young guy, going to be helping us again next year, just a sophomore. Can really run. So let, get four minutes to go here, defense. Certainly don't want to maybe get it back, but Darn sure don't want to let the Outlaws scratch here in the right. end of the quarter. Especially knowing it's that Marlowe keeper. gets the ball second half. And, yeah, so Gilbert going to keep it. Good tackle from Jordan. And it really was. Yeah. He was he was getting blocked well, and he's got great feet and got, got loose of it because that was going to be a first down, I thought, and then and Jordan stopped to about a six-yard gain. Guy's pretty handy, isn't he? Number yeah. Number two. Good player. So second three here, again, really good management. That went out of bounds anyway, but clock management's been pretty good by the uh, Outlaws the whole game. The keeper again for Gilbert, makes one man miss. Rhett Davis, big tackle there, saved a big gain. Yeah, kind of from behind. Kind of got banged up there. Not like the NFL where every time you have a scratch, you tap your helmet, you go out. In high school at Heritage Hall, you stay in. <laughs> As, and I know that's the way they guys want it. So first set of downs for the Outlaws inside Charter Territory, getting down to about 3.30 to play. Yeah, I mean, I promise you, Matt Weber and crew said, one, one way or the other, we are not giving the ball back to Heritage Hall if we score great, but... Oh, goodness. Great cutback. Yep. That's Clint Layden. You've seen him a few times getting carries as a freshman. Good player. There's a reason yes. he's getting out there, isn't there? So, nine-yard pickup there on first down. Fall asleep here. They want to go up top on one of them here. Look for bearing gauge there on the top of your screen to the outside. That's their that's their kind of go to guy from receiver, it seems like. And they're gonna give it to Layden again. Gonna pick up the first. Yep.
Clock rolling again. First down, Tim Marlowe from the, looks like the, about the 29. Yeah, 29. Ah, oh, Jordan, you can't run inside there. Yep. Yeah, oh, it's a tough call. Good tackle, Gerard Williams there on Very the outside. Good. Yeah. yeah. Gerard, great tackler. <laughs> oh, wow. Tough call. Yeah. Hey, that is tough. Marlo. Well, Marlo's not happy with that. Massive call right there. Going to stick him back to the 40. Bring up first and 20. One, I guess. Clock still moving as they wind it at two minutes to go in the half here. Tie game here at Pop Murray, 14 apiece. Yeah, under two minutes now, it keeps moving. <laughs> Play clock at five. Get it off just in time, yep. So give up the middle for a few. Still a long ways to go, second down. Like I said, I, I don't, they're not, they're going to maybe take a shot out of here, and I hope we're ready, but... Their biggest goal here is not let the blue shirts have the ball back in this half. And it'll be their ball to start the half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's too early. Yep. And they were definitely taking it, going to throw it. Yeah, there you go. Full star on Marlowe. So 59 seconds to go in the half here. Smart guys, don't bite on any double moves here. Just stay back, keep the keep the people in front of you. We should be fine. Second and 22 now. Marlowe and Yip, as you say, just don't let them get behind you. Well, we got a break here. Fans, I, I don't know if it'll be on the Charger Vision, but we have a treat at half. The Cheer and the Palm will both be doing their game day state routines. They have regionals tomorrow. That the Cheer girls will be in Tulsa, and the Palm girls will be just across our neighbor at Crossings for regional game day state cheer competition and Palm. And they will both be doing their routines at half. If you're, We can have that on the... Charger vision for you. Those girls put in a lot of hours, all of them. So here we go. I don't know what we're, we've been talking a lot of the officials to get this play going. Second and 22 for the Outlaws here. I imagine what the heck they got to lose by taking not taking a shot, right? Right. Throwing it back to 20 is what I thought they might do. Yeah. Yeah. So that was. Well, I mean, 20's sitting there wondering what happened. But he went, he ran a post and then turned it into a flat dig and then came back the other way. Yeah. <laughs> I think he was just kind of ad-libbing there. But that only ran off six seconds. Of course, incomplete. But third down, nonetheless, third and 22. See what the thinking ahead of what the Outlaws have in mind. I mean, they'll punt it. They'll punt it down there if they don't make this, I bet you. Almost make you think they might just run it to make Chargers burn a timeout. They they could. Yeah, they could. I don't know though. What? You know, it's a big game. It's tied. Take a shot. Right. Looks like they're going to. And he sacked. Oh, he almost got the ball. Yeah. Great job, Z, the Z man. That is Z's 16th career sack, number 10 on the all-time list in climbing. He's had as good a year as anybody on this football team has Xavier. Um, great motor, really big kid, but he can move. He is a beast in that weight room. Weight rooms, everyone buys in here, no doubt about it, but as far as the numbers and the charting, it's Bass, 
Ganya Body and Z leading the way on that. Fourth and 24 now. Chargers call a timeout. Absolutely. And, yep. and you know, ironically, we wouldn't if he gets it away and incomplete, but we'll take the sack, right? Right. Lost more yardage, but, I mean, I, I, I'll be shocked if, if Marla doesn't punt this. Cope penalties kind of derailed Marlowe. They were they were moving a little bit. I would say a punt back into the wind, but look at the flag and they're completely down. I mean not, but Peter that don't yeah. get in the way. Oh boy. Holy moly. A really good bounce down, and that's going to be down at the one. <laughs> like one of your chips, Max, right by the hole. <laughs> <laughs> I try to. <laughs> well, that's how you dial it up if you're the Outlaws and, and really schemed it up well, and surely they would have liked to have points there, but see what Coach Bogert has in mind. I mean, you know, this is not the Douglas Trojans, but we were stuck here one time in the Douglas game, and we just went 99. <laughs> but that's not <laughs> as likely against the Marlowe Outlaws. See what coach has in mind. I, you know, Heritage, they're not gonna. They're gonna go. You yeah, they're gonna yeah. go. Get him. You never know because they know they have a home run hitter there that if he gets loose, no one's catching him. Right. Just the first quick throw there. To Harris on the outside, out of bounds. Good. Thirty seconds. I mean, we have one timeout left. And right at 30 seconds, clock stopped. I guess we didn't quite get a first there. Quick throw really just gave them more room to operate. You're not standing in the end zone. Yeah, I thought he ran out. At about the 15, I was off five. Going to do it again. Oh. But, yeah, another. In just three seconds. So, 27 seconds. First down chargers. But. Only at their 17, 16 yard line, so. Yeah, 16. We need a spotter, Max. Yes. <laughs> it's binoculars. It's far back there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pass, back to throw again. He's gonna throw again. There we go, good ball there. Back you know, to really, It really was just a little bit of arc to get it over the mid-level defender there and uh, you know, 22 seconds, very efficient here by the Chargers. Not content to just take a knee. Want to push the push the issue here with the tie ball game. Let's see what we do here. Get some deeper routes, but yeah, they're, they were with. Oh, oh my no. gosh! Oh gosh! <laughs> just out of the reach there. That's six. Yeah, if he catches it. So 16 seconds here, and that will not deter Coach Brett Bogert. He, he stays aggressive at all times. So, you know, and, and they're going to be very deep. Got safeties at about 20 yards here, the two deep safeties in the corners at about 15. Uh, yeah, corners are 10 yards back. Yeah. Quick throw yeah. there to Rashad Smith. Did he get out of bounds? Yeah, he did. Yeah. So another first down. That's not really the point here with only 11 seconds left. You know, we've got the wind, and Cal Welker, pretty good kicker from inside 35, 40 yards, and that's an option if we could get another chunk play here. you got to figure two, possibly three plays here with 11 seconds left. That's going to scramble to the outside. He's just going to run. He knows he's got the speed. So, so yeah, okay, steps out so of four seconds. At the 35, that's a 52-yard attempt. Not going to happen. So they'll take one more shot in the end zone. Yeah, just give, give your guys a chance. Timeout chargers to... Definitely get exactly what they want here. Right.
Be a really big score for the Chargers here going into halftime. Take their first lead. Bass has the arm to get there just in one throw. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not a factor, but, you know. So here we go. Last play, assume, barring no penalty, last play of the half. One last shot to the end zone here. We got Jordan Harris down here to the home side. A shot all the way at the top. We're going to bring in. Yeah, yeah, they are. Ass made a miss. Oh, oh we got a we chance. Got Just threw it out yeah. of the end zone. It's a long throw. <laughs> so. Exciting half and and 14-all, uh, very similar to last week. Uh, I'd love to have a second half like we had last week as well. Yeah. So stay tuned for Cheer and Palm here as they do their routines for game day state. And we'll see you in the second half. The secret to settling your IRS debt in times of inflation and recession is simple. Together we'll show them they won't collect it all in time. So cut us a deal now. Call or visit Travis Watkins Tax today to find out more. Here at Joe Cooper Ford, we know that for Oklahomans, a reliable truck isn't just a luxury, it's a necessity. That's why we have a wide selection of Ford trucks and SUVs to choose from. Built tough and ready to tackle any job. Plus, we'll give you more for your trade-in just to get you in that new Ford truck. Whether you're hitting the lake, taking the team to the game, or just going out on the town, we'll make sure you're ready to go. And remember, we'll be any competitor's price on a new Ford by $500, or we'll give you $10,000. Who loves you, Oklahoma? What does it cost to settle my IRS debt for good? As always, Travis Watkins Tax offers a low fixed rate and will let you pay it out over time. Call or visit Travis Watkins Tax today to find out more. Hi everybody, uh, welcome to the halftime show. Uh, I'm Carson Beam here at Daniel Droz and right now we're gonna be uh, watching our Palm Show. So we're gonna let you guys watch that and then uh, get back to the halftime show action.
All right, welcome back, guys. That was the Palm Halftime Show. Um, Carson Beam here at Daniel Droz. Daniel, what did you think of the first half? Um, I thought Marlowe came out pretty strong. Uh, they're pretty good up front, and they haven't sent a lot. They haven't sent a lot of pressure. They've been a three-minute front for most of the game, so they're letting their secondary uh, win the game for them, and it's working so far. Yeah, even though they're not bringing a lot of guys, and they don't have a big front, or they have big guys up front, but not like a, they're only three-man front up front. Um, they're getting a lot of pressure on the quarterback. You know, first drive, several sacks, forcing a lot of pressure, uh, making it really hard for Andy Bass back there. You know, it's the third or fourth straight week with a slow start for the Chargers. And, uh, Daniel, what do you think uh, could be done to come out of these games stronger? Uh, I think games? I think Barrett can maybe give some more touches. As he played really well against Sulphur, and they had a pretty physical front, so maybe they can get the ball to him more. Uh, I agree. Um, this first half, you know, another thing that's happened, another recurring theme is the turnovers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can't start slow and have turnovers going into the playoffs. You know, first round probably not going to be a big deal. After that, though, it could probably cause some problems. Speaking of first round, um, right now as it stands, we are looking to play North Rock Creek in the first round next week. Um, barring a win from them, and then it could potentially open up the door for some crazy tiebreaker stuff, and maybe we could see a McLeod break in there potentially. So, Daniel, what do the Chargers need to improve on in the second half? Uh, their defen The defensive front did a good job at the end of the second half, or at the end of the first half, because uh, they uh, Marlowe needed to go a little fast pace to score, and they did a good job, but they need to stop the run up the middle a little more. It's kind of an interval of year up the middle that the quarterback keeps getting a lot of yardage on. So that needs to be contained a little better. Well, no, another thing you hate to see, Callahan Lowry goes down again, yeah. battling a shoulder injury, tore it once, let it heal up, came back, tore it second time, let it heal up and came back. And I asked him, I said, the same thing. He goes, same thing. And you hate to see that for the kid, you know, been a great force middle linebacker. How have these guys that have been stepping in and filling in been doing at linebacker, have you thought? Uh, they've done pretty well. Lost three starters over the past couple of weeks. Blaine Vogel, Eddie, and uh, Callahan just now. Uh, I feel like they've done a pretty good job, uh, but I think they can turn it up and launch in the second half. Well, one thing I noticed on the offensive side of the ball in the first half is we really struggled to get the, kind of the pass game going yeah. until that last drive. But, you know, in the last drive is just too little too late. You know, mm -hmm. um, What do you think we can do to start getting that pass game going up and working a little bit and, you know, to – Kind of just get it going overall. Uh, I think the the run game needs to be uh, established first for that to happen. Right. Because I mean, guys weren't really getting open that much, and Andy was kind of forced to flush out of the pocket, and that kind of put some pressure on him, and he he had he had to run, which probably is exhausting over the course of the game. Yeah. Like we said, they're putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback, but so are we. We've had a couple sacks of our own. Yeah. Um, you know, also forced a turnover. Carter Council, another interception on the year. It's great to see. Um, but another thing that has been a thing for us that I know Greg Ferguson and I have talked about on the halftime show is the special special teams matchups and how that impacts a game. And it's another day of the Chargers getting beat on special teams. And then that's not a discredit to us. That is – Extreme credit to this kicker and punter from Marlowe because he has been doing a phenomenal job. Daniel, you got anything else on their special teams? Uh, didn't their punter pinned us inside the ten? I think twice. He's done. He's done a really good job, and their kicker looks pretty good. Yep. He banged a couple extra points through the uprights that looked good from about like 50, 55 yards. Yep. So that might that might come into play later in the game. Yep. Well. The, like you said, their kicker and punter, I think it's the same guy. He's been doing phenomenal. Mm -hmm. His brother, I believe he is only a sophomore. His brother is a, was a five-star kicker coming out of high school, and I can't remember if he ended up at OU or Iowa State. I think he probably ended up at Iowa State with watching that OU's kicker has been playing. But um, speaking of OU, what are your thoughts on the game, OU and OSU, this weekend? I think I think it will be a very good game. It's, it's a battle of matchups. O, OU's had trouble stopping the run game. And if if they don't stop it on tomorrow, then it, they won't be in good hands. But if they, I think if they can force Alan Bowman to beat them through the air, then they'll have a good chance to win. Yeah, like you said, um, Ollie Gordon has been phenomenal for the Cowboys. Has been tearing it up, 200 plus rushing yards the past three weeks. And then you got an OU defense that's struggling right about now. So, you know, 
Looks good for the Pokes. Pokes are hot. Sooners coming off a yeah. loss. It'll be fun to see what happens down Stillwater tomorrow. Wish it was a night game because there's not a, not a sky darker than that than Stillwater, Oklahoma. But what do you think, you know, same score at the half last week. What are the Chargers? What's going on in that locker room right now, do you think? Um, I think probably Coach Bogert's probably telling their – uh, their D-line, or maybe their linebackers, get some to do better on run defense because they keep running the option. Their quarterback keeps getting loose and getting 10, 15-yard chunks each play. Right. I think what's happening is with having to switch some guys around due to injury the past couple of weeks, Callahan Larry going out this week, Blaine Vogel still not back from from injury. You know, he lost he lost some weight um, with his illness that he battled. For, he was out of school for, for a week, so, you know, I mean, um, it's having those two outs a hard loss, and these guys stepping in are kind of seeing some bumps on the road, but I think they're going to figure it out in the second mm -hmm. half. And if there's one thing the Chargers always do is they come out strong out of the second half. Yeah. And I think, you know, I'm not too concerned. I think they're going to handle business in the second half because a lot of these teams, every time they play us, they're going to give us their best shot. Um, it's just if we can weather the storm because I think we got more talent down the road than what they're going to have. But another thing to note is the Marlowe fans have traveled really well, and they've yeah. kind of turned this into kind of a neutral site game almost with how loud they've been. What do you think yeah. about that, Daniel? I think uh, anytime you play Heritage Hall, you want to bring your A game, and that goes along with the fans as well. And Marlowe's done a pretty good job here. Here we got traveling. a replay. Uh, Marlowe's quarterback drops back, and Barrett Travis with the sack. Charge has been doing a great job all night getting pressure, um, just struggling with containing the quarterbacks on some of the plays. Andy Bass drops back. Over the middle to Boston Fuller, great catch. You know, another thing is these Marlowe defenders have been hawking the ball and making sure you're going to feel it when you get hit. Marlowe up the middle, Jack Harris dragging them backwards, playing them in the ground. Charlie and Xavier also in on that tackle. Great gang tackling by Chargers right there, just how you teach it. Here, Marlowe quarterback drops back again. Jack Harris on the sack, gets him nice and low, makes sure he's down, secures him up. Here's a little toss, the double pass. Good setup by Marlowe. That's Gordon. If that, you know, if that's throwing the money, that's probably a good play concept. Underthrown. That's what happens when you throw with the running back. Carter counts is there to make the play. Fakes the handoff, rolls out to the left, across the body. Hits Jordan Harris. Underthrown. Jordan comes back to the ball, makes a couple guys miss, and he's off to the end zone. Great play by Jordan Harris. He's been a big play threat all season, and it doesn't stop tonight. Andy on the end around. Up the middle, makes a couple guys miss and gets brought down for a good chunk gain right there. You can kind of see him, you know, playing with some passion right there. Fakes the handoff again to the outside. This is the touchdown for Andy Bass. You know, it's kind of, you've seen a lot more uh, RPO from the Chargers. Mm -hmm. You know, that's been a, something they've been implementing a lot more, and it's what you do when you got a quarterback of that caliber with that speed. Marlow quarterback drops back in the pocket, Xavier Freeman. Great sack, almost gets the ball loose right there. Love to see the big fella playing with some energy. You love to see it. Daniel, 7.20 here left in the half. Chargers probably, you know, still talking in that locker room, getting ready. They'll probably come out here in about five minutes or so. You know, last week it was closer, so they came out early. We could see that again. Um, you know, who do you think is going to be a big – we're going to see implemented more on the offensive side of the ball in the second half. Barry Barrett Travis. This happened last week against Sulphur. Sulphur is a very physical team. They, and they were pretty good up front, just like Marlowe is. And then Barrett started running all over Sulphur, and that helped us win the game. Uh, I think the ability to establish that run um, inside the tackle is what we're missing right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Coach Free is probably getting those linemen right in there. Uh, you know, lines banged up a little bit. Jack Harris uh, battling injury, playing through it like the trooper he is. You got David Griffin, the sophomore, filling for Eddie Johnson. You got the three veterans up on that, filling on that other side. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're probably uh, getting chewed up in there pretty good right now. We haven't been able to establish the inside run, but, uh, you know, they're going to come out. They're going to fix that this, this second half. Defensively, Daniel, what would you like to see change in the second half, and what do you think some changes we could potentially see are? Um. The quarterback up in the middle needs to be fixed, I feel like. Maybe pinch the D-line a little bit, make him run to the outside. Uh, but their quarterback seems pretty athletic, so he'll be tough to stop. Yes, I totally agree. Um, and that, another thing to note, a win tonight will be the 73rd straight district win for the Chargers. So that's another thing hanging in the balance tonight. You know, we've clinched uh, 
the one seed in our district. And, you know, it's not based on total seeding in these playoffs. It's based off uh, district seeding. So, you know, our place in the playoff bracket is secured no matter what happens. But, you know, excellence is the standard here, and they're still pushing um, for another – Another win to keep the streak going. Another thing that's in, in the balance tonight is Rashad Smith's touchdown streak. Um, he scored a touchdown in every game, and that is uh, is waiting here in the second half, and it'll be exciting to see if he can keep that going. I'd love that for the kid. Um, Xavier Freeman, 15 career sacks, number 10 on the all-time list. Daniel, what do you think about that? Uh, I think Xavier's done a pretty good job. He's played, I think he started since sophomore year. Yeah. He's made, he's had a lot of production since then, yeah. and he should, he'll probably get a sack or two in the second half. Yes. Another notable thing, Barrett Travis, over 1,000 career rushing yards. Um, he's been a great guy that's filled in, kind of switched positions a little bit, moved around, and done kind of a lot of different things for the Chargers, and he's done an excellent job of that. On the injury report tonight, like we said, Bladen Vogel and Edward Johnson out tonight. Also, Klein Reuter and Ty Waldenville are still out, as well as Jet Conway, Luke Carter, Sam Fowler. So being depleted a little bit, it definitely hurts the team, but, you know, it is what it is, and we're looking for that next guy up mentality and replace. Daniel, what do you think? Gray and I have talked about this a lot in our halftime shows is the, when we get up big on these teams early on in district play, and we saved our three toughest games for the last three, um, what, do you, what do you think all these, these reps for these younger guys in those early games impacts when it comes down the stretch? Impacts when it comes down the stretch. Um, I think the younger guys, I think they'll get a lot of reps in round one, and maybe round two, because we'll be up big on those teams, I feel like. And down the road, it'll be helpful for them, because just to get those reps in is uh, very valuable for them. Yep. On our, uh, on our scouting report right here, the key to victory was to stop the quarterback um, on the quarterback run and in the pocket, and that's kind of what they've been exploiting tonight. So... You know, the fact that we know what we were expecting and that's what we had scouted down shows that the Chargers know what they're doing. It was just a few laps. Okay, it's not something they were un totally unprepared for. They were prepared for this, and they just had a few mishaps, a few miscommunications, a few personnel issues. I have no doubt in my mind they're going to get that straightened out in the second half and go on to victory. Another thing is our super prep feature player of the game, Jack Harris, coming back from his injury, I think, second or third week back. Daniel, how, what do you think about Jack Harris' play tonight? Uh, Jack's made some big plays. He, he had a, two sacks or one sack? Uh, one or two, yeah. He had one or two sacks, uh, stymied their drive, and uh, he's been a big-time player this game so far. And he does a good job on the O-line, and he's been pretty dependable there. Yep. Um, another thing, some Chargers playing college. Gavin Freeman uh, made a captain for Bedlam down in Stillwater yeah. tomorrow. What do you think about that, Daniel? All Oklahoma kids are captains for OU, and I feel like that shows how deep the state is in football talent, and it's no different with Gavin. Um, he's going to get a lot of reps tomorrow. It's going to be a big game for him. Also, men's basketball practice has started and underway at the Hall. Uh, same with uh, women's basketball, too, so that's going to be a great thing to be excited for in the coming weeks. But other Chargers um, playing football, an alumni report, Sterling Shepard, um, returning from a tour in ACL, he's got four receptions for 26 yards on the year. Uh, Billy Ross is having a phenomenal year. 99 carries, over 500 yards and five touchdowns, and around 100 receiving yards. Um, Philip Smitherman had a big interception last week on ESPN for Harvard. Um, if you caught that, Will Dunn uh, has had two tackles in week one versus Missouri against a big power, power five school. He's been playing great. Up at South Dakota, Melvin Swindle, um, you know, Eastern Michigan's is rolling. They just had a win at Toledo, or they play week Toledo this week on ESPN2 at 7:30. Um, 21 tackles on the year for him. Um, Jaden Williams at Missouri Western State, 24 carries, 112 yards, and a touchdown. Great for him. So Daniel, a lot of great things from the Chargers uh, this so far this year on on our field and the college level. The boys are back out on the field stretching, um, like we said a little bit earlier than usual. Coming out with that energy, they look like they're ready to go for the second half. But I'm Carson Beam, and this is Daniel Droz, and we'd like to thank you guys for a great halftime show and listen to us. Thank you, guys.
Miller Tippins is an award-winning commercial construction company specializing in building relationships. Our mission is to improve the lives of the people we serve. Exceptional work requires an exceptional team. No matter the scale of your project, we are committed to delivering excellence from our owner-driven team with over 100 years of combined experience. Let us be your A-team. Miller Tippins, your champions of commercial construction. Welcome back, Charger fans. Second half, just a couple minutes away here. We got a tie ball game here, just like last week, right? It's 14 all last week, I believe, at halftime, too. And then here we are, 14 all with Marlowe. Yeah, I like the result last week after the 14 all first half. Uh, came back and put it on them pretty good. See how the Chargers respond in the second half, something similar? Or well, hmm. you know, sure they'd like that, but Marlowe's playing good, smart football. Uh, I bet they want that halfback pass back. That's <laughs> the call they don't want to. That's the one they're kicking themselves over. They had big time momentum and wanted to run a trick play, and Carter counts with the the big pick there. Yeah, they've done a really good job of you know as you say they they're keeping it out of seven's hands. It's the biggest thing so far. Is they've only yeah, had I, an, only a handful of possessions. Yeah, I, you know again we don't have the full group of stats, but I, at the time of possession had to be largely in favor of Marlowe. Mm -hmm. Which in, in in a game like this, that's that's exactly what they wanted, I'm sure of it. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's smart, smart move. Not surprised. Marlowe will get the ball to start the second half here. Yeah, Gilbert, he's had some success from this, running the football. Minute 40 left now before we go ahead and kick it off. Always want to give a good shout out to great Luke Steelman and staff, you know, here make Charger Vision happen every week. It's quite a production. Student-led student, student -led is what we say, but, Max, you know it's truly led by Luke. Yes, Steelman. absolutely it is. <laughs> As a veteran Charger Vision man yourself. Take a look around the school. The men's basketball practice is underway and is being led by returning senior Thad Butler. Head coach Dylan Sullivan has an, has an inexperienced group for his second season, but they're working outrageously hard day in and day out. Others stepping up include juniors Roman Welch, Gavin Marr, Terrence Brown, Britt Mallerby, and senior Jackson Carter with several potential contributors still in football. Competition is fierce for spots alongside returning minute getters Rashad Smith, Thad Butler, and Carter Knowles. Your first chance to see the Chargers in action is November 6th when they host Bridge Creek for a scrimmage at 3.30 in the MAC, or tune in for pick slot coverage on NFHS, which will be through Charger Vision. And the girls already had a, they've had a couple scrimmages. Uh, they scrimmaged the, the old rival of Cassidy Cyclones yesterday. They did. Uh, coach Olivia Nixon, our new girls basketball coach, is excited. Uh, they're working hard to make it to March, and with a very athletic junior class, that's a fitting goal. The Chargers hosted Purcell recently, came out with a five-point win in a scrimmage. Reagan Fowler with 13, Marley Moore 12 to pace the Chargers. Nevaeh Johnson had six rebounds and four steals. Janelle Johnson and Johanna Bell each grabbed five boards. And up next for the Chargers is a scrimmage at Blanchard against the Lions and Southmore on November 9th at 5:15. But I didn't. I think Coach Sullivan told me it was. It went pretty well with against the Chargers or against the Cyclones yesterday over at Cassidy. So uh, a lot going on. Cross country had another great season. Uh, 4A meet at Edmond Santa Fe. The boys placed eighth. Individually, Will Blaylock was 12th, Finn Martin 51st, Dylan Orcutt 52nd. Those don't sound like that, but that's a lot of runners. Cal Zinner 56th, and Marion Dean 86th. The girls' team plays 12th at state. Making it to state is a big deal. Co freshman Coral Glimmett finished 23rd, Zephy Ellenberg is 32nd, Kaylee Norman 81st. Coach Chamney had some solid young runners coming back for both boys and girls' squad, so they should be able to carry the momentum forward as we start the second half. Oh, and dangerous. Tackled immediately. And by Jordan Harris. Yeah. Good job by that kid to even field it. Mm -hmm. Great kick. It's a dangerous spot there. Let it bounce in front of him. It's a line ball once it gets past 10 yards. Absolutely. So Marlowe will have it at their own 24-yard line. Camera 
Gilbert going to continue to wait to get his sign from the coach on the sideline instead of going to like a normal huddle is what they've done all game. Here we go. Gilbert the keep up the middle. Jack Harris yep. on the tackle there, but not before a six-yard gain, seven-yard gain on first down. Good ball handler. He's got great mechanics, holds that fake in there a long time. Second and three now. Can't let this pace frustrate you. You just got to play. And for the hard count, they're, they're, in, they're inside of five almost every snap on the play clock. Yeah, down to three, and they get her off. King Harrison there on the carry for Marlowe. I haven't seen him yet. Another big kid. Well, he's not too big, but he good quick feet there and got up in there. Says 150, but but uh, when um, but that was a nice run. I mean, it doesn't look like 150. <laughs> I know he looks good. First down though, and clock running. Give again. That one's going nowhere. Yes, and say you got about two there. Like spot. It's David Griffin on the bottom of that pile, and Z Freeman on the top. David gotten a lot of run this year at Mike Backer. Very versatile player, sophomore for us. Brother of Jack, good player and Duke graduate, Jack Griffin. Second and seven now. The counter action. Oh, he could met tough in there. Yeah. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. David Griffin was in there like a missile that time, along with Charlie, Ganya Body, Jack. Great job there. No gain on second down, so third and seven. Come up with a stop here, defense. Big third and seven forthcoming, absolutely. Quick throw out. Picked, yeah. Beautiful, there Red, is. Red Davis. Anything that Grett gets his hands on, he catches. What a great play and a little bit of a bad throw. But we, we had Red Davis out there in pass coverage and make him a corner. <laughs> Big, tough sophomore, but uh, a great hands, as good a hands as we have. And about a foot off the ground, and he makes the pick. Huge play there for Rhett and gets the Chargers offense in business in Marlowe territory. It's a big turnover, yeah. So first and ten now for Bass in the offense. That's going to keep it. Right. Good tackle there in the open field. Outlaws tackle well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eight yards on first. We'll take it. Yep. Good first down pickup there. You can give to Jordan out of the backfield yeah. there, and he's got a lot of running room. Jordan Harris getting outside. He's got speed. One man to miss. Made a miss. Jordan Harris out, out of about the one. The two, you're going to say. Great job. Great job blocking on the perimeter there by Cal Welker and company. And then electric moves by Jordan Harris. Little change up there, like you said. Max got Jordan in the backfield on the outside zone, really, is all that was. And he got loose. Yep. So Chargers in business first and goal after the big pick by Rhett Davis. They got the Chargers in great position here. Yeah, going to keep it, and Bass is going to score. Touchdown, Chargers. They, they take the lead. Great response after the turnover. 
Yep, first lead of the game for the Chargers with 8.37 left in the third quarter. Extra point pending, Chargers up six. Walker to attempt the extra point. Up and good. So 8.37 left in the third. The, Charger, the Chargers take advantage of the turnover. Go up seven now, 21-14. Yeah, wouldn't sit right here. We haven't been out long. <laughs> they had six commercials by now with Fox. <laughs> Let's look at some of our guys. Charger football alumni report, it's a long list and part of the reason the Chargers will start at the top of the food chain here with the pros with Sterling Shepard still with the Giants in his eighth year. Uh, not had many targets this year, but he is active for the, for the Giants, just four catches so far this season. They play the Raiders this Sunday. Billy Ross continues his great career at Emporia State. He has 99 carries this year for over 500 yards and five scores and 16 catches. Uh, he's had a great career at Emporia State, a really great D2 football play uh, school. Philip Smitherman has 15 tackles, a forced fumble, and a pick for the Harvard Crimson as he's about to graduate from Harvard. What an impressive student athlete Philip was. Will Dunn is up at South Dakota still, 6'3", up to 300, playing D tackle. Had a couple of tackles in week one at Missouri. Their next game is versus Southern Illinois. And Big Mel still playing, has 21 tackles this year for Eastern Michigan in the Mac. You always keep your eyes up, you may catch a. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, Layden there on the return. A good return there into Charger territory. Yeah, 46 yard line, so a great spot for the Marlowe starting position here. First and 10 from the 46 now. I give to Layden, bounce it outside. Jumps forward for a good gain. About 10. Solo tackle there by Graham Murphy. But not Like you say, not before he gained about nine and a half. Yeah, they're going to say a little short there. So it's a good looking freshman right there. Second very short now on the Charger 37. Give it to Layden again. Bounce through for a first down. Another great tackle by Xavier Freeman from the backside five technique. Like I said, he moves really well down the line of scrimmage. Trillion team throwing out a bunch of footballs. It is raining footballs out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a weekly tradition. <laughs> Marlowe in business, first down on the Charger 29 after the great kickoff return. Seven and a half and counting here in the third quarter. Charlie had a chance and oh, he just, I thought he had him. Jordan Harris jumps on Gilbert's back, but not before a gain of eight. Yeah, he kind of scored it through there. Second and two now. Marlowe putting up a good drive here. Yeah. 
There's the power toss there, mm -hmm. what we call that. A good looking play there. That was Hudson Morgan, and that was the play they scored a touchdown on, I'm pretty sure. Mm, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Six two two oh three, big tenth grader. So fresh to the downs in in the red zone now. On the twelve. In and again, Hudson Morgan bounced through. Did he get in? Yeah, touchdown. He broke the plane when he reached. Touchdown, Marlowe. Good run there, Hudson Morgan. Broke a couple tackles. Um, pretty impressive drive. You know, great field position and 100% on the ground by the Outlaws right there. Mm-hmm. Kick is up and good. So back to a tie ball game now, 21 all. We're going to go ahead and head to a commercial break. We'll be right back for the Charger offense. Oklahoma is known for its lakes, farm ponds, and creeks. And whether you take a highway or a dirt road to get there, Joe Cooper Jeep gets you to your destination. Right now, buy any Jeep for 10% below employee pricing. Plus, Joe Cooper always gives you more for your trade-in. And remember, we'll beat any dealer's price on a new Jeep by $500, or we'll give you $10,000. Only here at Joe Cooper. Who loves you, Oklahoma? Welcome back, Charger fans. Marlowe just about ready to kick off here. 5.57 to go in the third quarter, 21 all. A good drive there from the Outlaws on the ground. Yeah, got a good one here. Game effort by the Outlaws tonight. Gilbert to kick off for Marlowe. Got a hold of that one. Wynn took it <laughs> to the back of the end zone. So touchback. Charger Roberts will take over. Good drive on a short field last time we saw the Chargers. Got the full 80 this time. Mm -hmm. Great catch by yeah. Gerard. One-handed, but when he had to kind of backtrack to catch it, it slowed it down. stalls the play out mm -hmm. there. Trying to figure out ways to get the ball to that young man in space. Going to get on as a loss. Looks like a loss of about one there. Second and 11 now. Bass going to keep it to the outside. It's, it's, come, through. it's coming back. Sit hard there, number ten. I would think is Blade Harris. I've never seen a team with this many duplicate numbers. <laughs> it's crazy. Tough holding call there, or so. Pins the Chargers back inside the ten.
second and 20 now. That's quick throw to the outside. Caught by Rashad and tackled immediately there. About eight of that yards yep. back, right? Got a little bit back for third down now. Third and 12. Can't go off scores. You know, these guys got beat by Plainview last week. Yep. And Sulphur the week before that. Playing their tails off tonight. Good ball to Cal Welker. Great job hanging on to that after a good lick. Yep. They're just short of the first down, I think. Yeah, it looks like just short. Wow, that's. Jeez. Well, the ball's touching the 30. It's a first. I guess it quite it isn't quite so fourth and a few inches. Tough spot there. Yep. Going to bring up fourth and very short. The Charger offense going to stay on the field. Good to hear. And stay out. Stay in the gun even on the fourth and short. It's going to keep it up the middle. It's going to be close, I think. Guy's coming right down the 30. Yep. Looks like he got it by about an inch. Yep. Yeah, they're saying he got it. Marlowe defended it well. Yeah, Andy Bass I mean, is strong. Everybody, everybody in the stadium knew what was coming, and they did a good job. He got about half a yard. But a new set of downs. Coaches, the Chargers. coaches at Marlowe not happy with that mark. So <laughs> both coaches are irritated. <laughs> with the last two spots. Not interference, okay. Intended for Boston Fuller there. Yeah, no pass interference there, so second and 10. Three thirty to go here. Second and ten for the Chargers in the third quarter. Twenty-one all. Here at Pop Murray. Bass the screen to Shad. Yeah. Got a few, but was dragged down from behind and he's picked up and pulled back. Great job by Cal Welker there on the blocking. Springing that for seven yards. Yeah. Good gain there. Third and three now. Third and a short three. It's in, in between those two markers, those two yard lines. That's going to throw it there. Dropped. Yep. Carter Knowles. So third and three. Fourth and three. See what Brett Bogert and the Chargers want to do here. Yeah, they're going to stay on. Well, no doubt. Big play here. Fourth and three. Bass down the middle behind yep, his behind intended Carter target Knowles. there. Yep. So, Outlaws hold. Get great field position here. With the score tied. Yep. It's a big stop there for Marlowe. First and ten now. And 37. Defense, rise up here. Good job there, Red yep. Davis, getting him on the ground. Pick up a two. Maybe three, yeah, three yards. Mm -hmm. 
Hard count, didn't jump. Gilbert gonna keep. And nothing doing. Xavier Freeman and Charlie. Yep. I think David Griffin got a hold of that leg first. So good job there by the charge. Bring up a third and long. Certainly two to make six here for the uh, Outlaws. Just approaching a minute to go here already in the third quarter. Here it is flying by, my goodness. Gilbert going to pass. He's got a man deep. Stay with it there. Draw Williams. Way to stay with it. Yeah, good right job. The whole time. Good job not interfering. Great coverage. Good job letting the kids play there. It was That was not interference. They are allowed to touch. So that will bring up fourth and three. Or excuse me, fourth and six. No reason to punt it here, you know, possibly of only gaining 14 yards, so mm -hmm. got to go. So another big fourth down here. It's time for the Charger defense. Possible slant up top. You know, now he's going to. Let me say it. He's oh, got him. He's got him, yep. He got him. Touchdown. Marlowe. Number 20, Jacob Kraus in there. Broke, get, got past the defense. Yeah, good ball there. Marlowe back in front now. On a fourth down conversion. Gets us for a touchdown. So Char Chargers down six here with the third quarter about to wind down. They never, look, they never look good, but they go through. Yep. Kicker, he does it all for the Marlowe Outlaws tonight as they take a 28-21 lead. Stay right here as we are near the end of the first, the third quarter. Marlowe on top now, 28-21. Yeah, as you said, definitely can't just look at other scores. And look at past scores. <laughs> Transit property does not work. No. Charger Vision would like to thank Hayes Legal Solutions for their support. HLS is prim primarily handles high net worth divorces, real estate, renewable energy lease negotiations, and estate planning. Located conveniently in Gloria Parkway, give them a call at 405-635-5578. Well, chances of this one being returned slim with the wind at their back here and the big lay of Gilbert. Here we go, Harris back deep, Gilbert to kick. It looks the same every time, yep. the same spot. Kind of <laughs> a draw every time to the left, but he kicks it in the end zone. The Chargers will take, Chargers will take over, first and 10 on the 20. See how this Bass offense responds here. First and 10 to give to Travis. Runs outside and he's tackled for a loss there. Yeah, Marlowe feeling good. Momentum, momentum is the way of the Outlaws right now. Yeah, second and 11 after the one yard loss.
Trips to the bottom. A gift to Harris there out of the backfield. Was hit was tackled almost as soon as he got the ball. That's probably going to end the third quarter as we wind it down here. Outlaws with we're going to go into the fourth quarter with a seven point lead. I don't think we're going to try yep. to run one here. And yeah, we'll take a break and be back for what hopes to be a wild fourth quarter. Outlaws up seven here at Pop Murray. Injuries don't wait for business hours. Now you can be seen 24 seven for sports injuries. Whether you have a sprain or a broken bone at the SSM Health Bone and Joint Injury Clinic at 13401 Northwestern. Welcome back, Charger fans. Start to quarter number four here. 28-21 Outlaws charges with the ball. Third and ten, though. Big play here for both teams. Moral defense has stood tall so far this quarter after... After the lone score at the first drive of the game, or for, of the second half, excuse yeah, off me. The, off the interception. Mm -hmm. Plenty of time, Chargers. Just go play ball. No, no need to get overly concerned here. So uh, there's your kind of that ninja look they tried in the first half, and Marlowe did call timeout. So Bass is going to throw deep. Gerard, oh, oh my through goodness. his hands. <laughs> He's gone. Yep. We got to punt it. So fourth and ten now. Not really trickery, you'd say, but a odd formation doesn't work out. Yeah, great call, and, and Bass put it on him and just mm – -hmm. Didn't hang on, so just punt it and go play some D. Is Andy out there? Bass is not out there. Here he comes. There he is. <laughs> Plenty of time here, 15 on the play clock. Good spiraling kick. Oh, he slipped. <laughs> Oh, boy, that helped. Going to get a nice charger roll there all the way to the 22-yard line. So a really good punt there. Kind of flipped the field there on him. Yeah, that was that was big. Because mm -hmm. Marlowe had a chance to get really great field position on that. But good punt. And a, for them, an unfortunate slip by their returner. and let, no, it was not allowed to field it. And gave us about 10 more yards. First Tim Marlowe on the 22 now. They're not going to do anything different. I mean, this is going to be on the ground and say, stop us if you can. Especially now with the lead for sure. I mean, they're not even putting two guys out here on these receivers. Yep. Five yards. Keep up the middle there. Oh, no. That's good. I, I saw a lineman fall down. I thought it was <laughs> Gilbert. So about what, three? Yep. Three, four yards there. So second and six. Yeah, play clock already down to eight. Just now getting to the line. 
There's that deal, same deal on that quick huddle. Then they turn and toss it. Makes it look like a short yardage attempt. Got about two there. A big, big third down here. Third and about three. Third and three now. Approaching 10 minutes in regulation. They're going to run this all the way down. 15 on the play clock. Don't jump. You can see a hard count here with inside five to go. Yeah, they aren't breaking the huddle until inside 10, and yeah. Same play. They ain't going to get it. Yeah, he is. Chug forward for a couple more. Hudson Morgan there getting those. Those quick tosses out of the under center. And it can be demoralizing when yep. you, as this happens, and, and uh, as your very measured approach by the Outlaws have stayed in their plan. Laden now back in the backfield with, with Gilbert. Give to Layden, ran into a pile. Good lean, though. Yep. <laughs> so a couple there brings up second and eight. Clock winding, about nine and a half to go here. Big second down play here. The last third downs they've had have been more about three and four, a lot easier to pick up on the ground. Yep. Throw it there and should be should be a backward pass. See what they call. I think so. Incomplete. Yeah, incomplete. Pretty big deal. About a six-yard difference. Well. A big deal. No, they, they are make. They okay. are saying that was that nobody. I didn't see much of a signal. Now there it comes back to the original line of scrimmage. So, so a big second down there with clock stopped and incomplete pass brings a third and long now. Third and eight. Big third down here for the Chargers. Yeah, crowd into it. Weaked in football. Going to call timeout maybe. Down to two. Got it off in time. Gilbert's going to pass. Deep. Incomplete. Great coverage there. It's gotta be, that's offensive. They didn't yeah. call it, but that's okay. They're going to have, I would imagine, punt this. Great stop there by the Chargers. Yeah. Almost feel like they're just throwing up and hoping for a P.I. there. I mean. Gerard Williams was with him the whole way. He was in the right position. Punt team coming on the field. That's. Terrence Johnson back deep for the Chargers. They were not set. Great punt. Yeah, really good punt. High punt. Fair catch there. Caught at the 26-25 yard line. Okay, Chargers. 8.50 to go in the regulation here. Chargers obviously need a score. Let's go. Offense. That's going to keep. Yeah, just nothing. Nothing there. They're going to give him one there, yeah. Second so. nine, so. Fast keeping again to the outside there. Eric oh. Travis had a good block there, a pancake there. Sure did. Bring up a big third down though, third and about five. Yep. Well, yeah, third and four. Here 
Here we go. Third down two. Let's go. Fast gun. Quick throw there. Oh Caught my. there. Wow. wow. <laughs> Great catch there, Rashad Smith. Really was. I thought he. I thought he picked it. Yeah, I did too. I was like, oh no. <laughs> yep. Great hands there by Rashad to collect that one. A lot of, a lot of action happening in front of him and tipped by the Marlowe player. A great catch and a conversion there. Eight minutes and counting. First down the 45. And give to Travis. Just yep. Marlowe defensive line has been all over the place today. No gain there. Fast up the middle. He's got speed. There we go. Broke free that time for a first down. He's still going. Probably tackled. But not after a Charger first down there on second and ten. So the Charger driving inside Marlowe territory now. Getting to 7-18 now left in the fourth. Timeout. Timeout Marlowe. Marlo. A little bit on their heels, want to collect their thoughts and make sure they're all on the same page with defensive coordinator there. Uh, so good, has no no surprise there, great medal shown by the Chargers to respond as we have all evening and all season to anybody scoring. Mm. And uh, we're in good shape here in Marlowe territory, just plenty of time, obviously not a factor at this stage. As we get down to it, timeouts will probably become a become a major major factor. Marlowe already used that one early in their early in the quarter, or just now there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Chargers have all three of theirs. Yep. First and ten now. As looked like he's going to throw, and then now he's going to keep it to the outside. Another first down there, a pickup of about 14. One of that K State type uh, play pass. That yeah, they've made famous up in Lawrence, in Manhattan, uh, but they covered uh, they covered us. So good ad lib there by Andy. Picks up a big first down. So a fresh set of downs on the 30. Throw there to Gerard to the outside. Going to cut back in before he's pushed out of bounds at the 10. First down, Chargers. Yeah, great stuff there. Getting Gerard the ball like we mentioned earlier. So it brings up a... First and goal looks like on the nine, nine and a half. So the pretty much the full boat to go here for the touchdown. But great shape here. 650 to go. That was out of bounds, so we're at 651 to go in the fourth. Fast to keep. Get tackled immediately there. Gain of not much. Second down now. Second and goal from the nine. So open formation now. Jordan Harris in the backfield along with Andy. That's a bad. Yeah, touchdown. there it is. Yep. Easy score, Bass. Good read there. Absolutely, they they didn't stay honest on the back side of that, and uh, you better. That's the, the franchise going to pull it and jump in the end zone for another touchdown. Uh, well, the book says, yeah, take the PAT here. It looks like that's what we're going to do. Uh, 
They'll be coming like heck to block this. Mm -hmm. So uh, all important PAT now to tie it up. Cal Welker, money as usual. Good job, Walker Nelson, putting it down. All these things, you know, get a little harder when it's tight. PAT execution is a lot easier at 56-7. <laughs> what, what a ball game here. 28 all, 6-10 to go. Chargers getting ready to give it back to the Outlaws. Good night for anything better. Week, week 10 football. Two of the best teams in the division going at it. District. Where do we have kicking off? It, sometimes that, you know, we've got a little debris at our back here and uh, I see Cal on the field, he, is he, but he's on kick. It looks like Carter Counts is going to kick off. Okay. Try and get this back there. Marlowe's had some success on kickoff returns. Absolutely. Now this would be big to get this 20 or better. Right. Yeah, Carter Counts kick off there. Laden and Bright back deep for Marlowe. Good kick. Good kick. Yep. Yeah, good job, Carter. Big play right there to get that one in the end zone for the touchback. So the Outlaws will be in business at their own 20 with 6-10 to go in the ball game in regulation. Tie game here at Pop Murray. Turnover would be good here. Absolutely. Deliberate even when the clock's not running. <laughs> yeah, down to 10 on the play clock. The give there. Yeah, it didn't go anywhere. No gain. <laughs> Laid in there, yeah, no gain. Jack Harris makes the play there. Second and ten. <laughs> Five forty and counting. They whether they score or not, just like the first half, they just soon go to overtime and not give us the chance. That's a pull by Gilbert. He stayed up. What a run. Fell down, first 40 down. first down. Yeah, big first down pickup there. Cade Gilbert, he's been the guy so far. Fresh to the downs, 520 and counting on their own 31 for the Outlaws. Watch for the power toss. Yep. There it is again. Nothing doing there. He's giving to Hudson Morgan again, and that didn't go anywhere. We started to figure Graham, that out. Graham Murphy and Dave Griffin in on that. Two, two of our better sophomores. Second and about eight now. Under four and a half to play. Tied in, going to flip. It was not. Yeah, uh, big beauty, time, beauty. yes. Yeah, Graham Murphy again, cut him down behind the line of scrimmage and marked it at the line. I don't. It's tough. Third and eight coming. Third and 
a long seven. Play the game here, four minutes and counting, under four minutes. Now, score tied at 28. Here we go, crowd on their feet, Pop Murray. Biggest third down of the game, upcoming. See what Marlon chance to do here, I mean. Timeout, maybe they're down to two, one. I don't think they got her off, but well, just before. Oh, oh my God, he caught it. And that was 13, Baron Gage just tipped it up to himself. What a conversion. Uh, as he was being hit, Gilbert delivered it. Clock's going to wind three, under three and a half now, 320. First and 10 on the 45 now. Good job by the Chargers sitting in there on the hard count. Five, four, three on the play clock, two, two. one. Yeah. Timeout. Or eight. Yeah, they, they didn't get time out. So Marlowe burns their second time out of the half. Thought they were late on that last play too, looked like, but. Marlowe's done a great job of just dragging this clock down. I mean, yeah, yeah, just keeping the ball out of Andy Bass's hands. Game reset here, 301 to go in the fourth. Marlowe first down and 10, their own 45 with only one timeout, and the Chargers still have all three timeouts. Get to late, and he's getting bounced to the outside. Yeah. There you go. Terrence Johnson with the great stick there. As the freshman gets up slowly. Yep. Rhett Davis got in the backfield and. Yeah, bounced him. Mm hmm. Uh, is, uh, is that Xavier Freeman down? That is Xavier down. Hopefully, just got dinged or kicked right there or something. And, uh, take a lot to keep him out up on his own yeah need him you have to come out for at least one great stop there by like you said Rhett Davis penetrated had to bounce and Terrence Johnson finished that up for no game Iron Man football with these linemen, Charlie and Z and Jack Harris, literally never come off the field. Second and 10, Hillman Brown in that defensive end for Freeman. Clock gonna roll now, under 240 now. You know, Gilbert, I imagine he's got a great leg for a field goal try, is what they may have in mind. Right. Obviously not from here, but Gilbert's going to keep it. Got a couple. Good. Good job. More sophomore power right there. Terrence Johnson and, and uh, Graham Murphy. Chargers going to burn their first time out. 2.13 to go. Third and six coming up. So another massive play in this tight one here. question here is you know does 
Marlowe risk throwing it incomplete and then obviously letting us keep our both timeouts in, right. in the mm -hmm. pocket or take a chance. They run the ball well all evening and, you know, then to make if they don't pick it up, we have to burn one. Uh, then they only have one if they choose to punt it. They may not, depending on this play. Gilbert's had some success in the keeps, especially up the middle. He's gotten about six a lot of times. Yeah. He's been able to squirt through the small holes that have been formed. There aren't many. We know there aren't. So on their own 49, the next latest play of the game here, third and six for the Outlaws. So here we go, crowd on their feet. Two tight ends, power looking set here. Going to throw it. Yep. Looking for Gage again to the corner. Incomplete there. One man route. And they did throw it and obviously stopped the clock for mm -hmm. us. 2.07. And I wonder if Coach Weber had it in his mind the whole time. We're going for it. Uh, no, here they're yeah. going to punt it. Got to punt it. Maybe with a minute, under a minute, maybe not. But you have to punt it with 2.07. Right. So Terrence Johnson again back deep. Great stop by the Chargers. So a big punt here. Oh, great oh, hop. Yeah. Fortunate there. So a lot different bounce from last time. The Chargers are going to get it on about the 23. So honest, like truly, they two-minute drill coming up here, right, yes. Max? Yes, uh-huh. Two minutes on the number left for Andy Bass and company to have a chance to go win this thing. Yeah, they haven't, they haven't had to really use that yet, especially in this scenario, but they, I, know, I know they practice it. I know they know what's coming. They're doing that same deal again <laughs> with Ninja. Flipped it to the opposite side. See, the funny thing is, why would you go over there? None of those guys are eligible. I would keep right. my D lineman in here. Yeah. So, yeah, so Bass is going to run here. Yeah, a lot of room. Oh, he ran into his own guy. I, I'm, I'm not going out and guarding those linemen. That's silly. I mean, they can't go out on a route. Right. But all their big guys go out and stand out there. That's the idea. So a big first down pickup there. First and 10 now from the 45, 149 and counting. Travis tackling mm. the backfield there. Good play there. 140 and counting. Here we go. Loss of three, right there. Peyton Needle there. We've he's been he's been around. So Marlowe called their final timeout. One twenty-five to go here. I mean, some of you Charger fans may be a little surprised if you just flipped it on. It's just we're so spoiled, 28 all. That's unusual for any game with Heritage Hall in the regular season and certainly in district. Um, but that's where we are with the tough Marlowe Outlaws who've come in town with a tough mindset and have played the Chargers a great game here. And the Chargers uh, have a chance to go win in regulation. Plenty of time, two timeouts in the back pocket for the Chargers. Second and 11 here at the Chargers 43-yard line. You know, playbook's wide open. You know, you're not pressed for time really here. Uh, you know, it's always a, what a luxury to have a trigger man like, like Andy. And Yeah, still two timeouts, minute 25, plenty of time here. So, um, uh, okay, trips to the top. I I'm seeing 12 people. <laughs> Travis in the backfield as usual. Here we go. There's a one extra screen yep. here. Yeah. Screen. There we go. That's a good look. Travis in the open field. Travis. Oh, oh, he tripped up. 
Hey, it's okay. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> because, you know, there's a lot of time left. And caught him in a blitz. Great job, Brett Bogart, as always, comes up with a great one. Uh, they haven't blitzed a ton. And caught him with one there and got a big gainer to Travis. So kind of going a little hurry up there. Pass up the middle, big gain there. So if you're Marlowe, if you're Marlowe, do you uh, do like OU did last week and right. let him walk in the end zone mm -hmm. here? I mean, if, if you let us milk it down, you're going to lose for sure. So that's hard to say, but you might say let him in here. Of course, they have yeah. no timeout, so. Bass. Oh. That's did score, yeah. Touchdown, Chargers. They take the lead, 48 seconds left. Andy Bass with the go-ahead score. The keep from seven yards out. Was there any doubt? <laughs> One who was getting it and who wasn't, wasn't too what he was going to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they didn't really let him score, but they did. The unintentional intentional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big extra point here, 48 seconds to play. Special teams in close games always matter. Good job, Walker Nelson. Yeah. On a low snap, he never panics. Senior, calm, cool, and collected. Puts it, puts it out, laces out, and Cal knocks it through. Chargers 35-28 here with 48 seconds to go. And, you know, again, sometimes we take it for granted that that uh, that we just go ten and zero all the time, and, and <laughs> that's we didn't last year. But um, uh, most years we do. When you're 110 and seven, that means you go ten and zero a lot, right? Yeah. <laughs> New opponent next week. It looks like we're going to play the North Rock Creek team from Shawnee. It's a team that's it's a school that's been around for a long long time as a K through 8 and then a few years ago they went ahead and expanded to K through 12 uh, know them from the old Shawnee days there Max <laughs> yeah we'll be playing North Rock Creek here obviously have never played those guys they'll be there bringing red and black and, and they'll be traveling to the city next week to get a dose of high school playoff football Nothing better, taking the lead and playing Ozzy Osbourne. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you take it for granted. Oh, you're just going to go score from 80 yards. Well, yeah, we did. Carter Counts puts his foot into it. And, yes, sir, what a great clutch yeah. kick by Carter to get that one nine yards deep in the end zone. So no return, obviously, for the Marlowe Outlaws. They got to go 80. Field goal does them nothing. Here with 48 ticks left on the clock and 48 ticks from a 10-0 perfect regular season for Heritage Hall. So here we go. Gilbert in the gun, Layden. Extra DB in. Oh! oh. Quick throw there, complete. Good job, Carter Counts with the solo. Big tackle inbounds. Are they saying short? Yeah. Yeah. We'll give him nine yards. And it's the biggest thing in the clock. Keeps running, right? 30 seconds. Yeah, they got to move now. Quick. Out of bounds there. Yeah, Jacob Krause in there, back to back receptions. First down, long ways to go, no sweat. 24 seconds left. Sacked. Cal Wilker, first man there, along with Charlie and Graham Murphy. And as usual, Xavier Freeman. A little big sack there, 10 seconds in counting. Marlowe is in, is in rush mode now. Five seconds. Hit immediately down, two, That's one, good. ball game. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. The Chargers are tested in week 10 at home and stand tall.
What a game. Yeah. What a game. Chargers pull it out and go 10-0. They will, our district champs were before the game. What a second half. Defense got ready to go. We will be down with our player of the game, Andy Bass, uh, in just a moment on our on field interview. But uh, all right, Charger fans, season three is upon us. Get ready. Playoff football at Pop Murray the next two weeks. Assuming we can beat the North Rock Creek guys, we'll have two home games the next two weeks right here from home. Uh, it's that time of year. Buckle up and as the Chargers chase another goal ball. Max, I enjoyed it. I'll do the sideline deal uh, or the uh, player of the game down on the field. Enjoyed it, buddy, and we'll yes, do it sir. again soon. Oklahoma City, I'm Miles Perry, and I want you to listen to my show, Super Prep Live. Super Prep Live takes an in-depth look at the Oklahoma high school student athlete and what makes he or she become great at what they do. Super Prep Live can be heard on OKC's CBS Sports Radio 105.3 and Instagram Live. Make sure you tune in and learn about the next great student athlete on Super Prep Live with me, Miles Perry. <laughs> Deppy Fostov grew out of our love of historic preservation and architectural salvage of building materials. Whether you're looking for doors, light fixtures, hardware, reclaimed lumber, statues, plants, or home decor, Dead People Stuff is the perfect piece for your next project. And the Dead People Stuff family is growing. Come check out our 40,000 square foot compound featuring a brewery, barbecue, tattoo shop, barber shop, and a cat cafe. We pay you cash to haul off your trash. Help us save history one piece at a time. Welcome back, Charger fans. What a finish from Pop Murray. Chargers hang on for a 35-28 win over a really tough Marlowe team. This is, I mean, it almost kind of feels like ho-hum. You know, they just every year, 10-0, okay. district champs, 10 years in a row now. And that was, that was a tough Marlowe team that came in here ready to play. And Chargers, tough as nails keep fighting back they were on in all honesty they were down for a lot of the game they were down for more than they were ahead I would I don't have the official stat but I would think so the only time they took the lead was that 21-14 touchdown early in the third quarter other than that Marlowe came back after after going down 21-14 a great response from Marlowe with a couple of touchdowns they did a great job sticking to their game plan and they kept the Charger offense off the field The Charger defense, they stood tall when it mattered. Last couple of drives, forcing a big punt there um, to, to set up the, the winning drive. And then right there in the, in the final 48 seconds or so, giving up one first down, but no, uh, no sweat on the first down. And a big sack there from a host of Chargers put the game away, really. Partner Steve is down in the field waiting for player of the game, Andy Bass, for our on-field interview. We'll be back next week, as Steve said. We'll be back next week at back at Pop Murray Field. North Rock Creek Cougars coming to town. A team, like we said, have not played yet before. Got beat by Metro Christian today. So that'll be the 1-4 matchup in the first round of the playoffs. And then we'll hang on there. You'll have round two back at, back at Pop Murray. Take a look at some scores here around. Got it pulled up here. Number three ranked Perkins, a good team to look out for. They uh, they took their lone loss to to this Marlowe team actually earlier in the season, 
Um, but they also have a really good win over Metro Christian. They beat Man for 49 to 6. Sulphur. Sulphur hosts Plainview in a big game for second and third place, really, in that division in, in our district. And Sulphur comes out with a 30 to 20 win. And then, yeah, McLeod with a 54 13 romping of Mount St. Mary. Lincoln Christian, the, the other team to beat in Class 3A, cruises against Locust Grove. As you see there, all our, all our guys going to ring our victory bell, the Eddie Bell. Great tradition there that has done a lot, and for good reason. Been around Heritage for a long time, and I think I've only seen us lose twice here since I've been around. I've Remember, watch this. We get we got beat in the in the ice one time against Kasha, and then last year against Clinton. Other than that, I don't know if I've seen us get beat here. Pretty dominant down here at Park Murray Field with the Chargers. trying to find Andy. Are you, did you find Andy? Coulter's just down in the group of okay. all of them. They're just taking a bunch of pictures. Coulter's just down there in the group. I can see his camera is just pointing from the ground right now. It's just, he's down in the group, yeah. Okay. I think they're just talking. Yes, yeah, do you? See that, yeah. The secret to settling your IRS debt in times of inflation and recession is simple. Together, we'll show them they won't collect it all in time. So cut us a deal now. Call or visit Travis Watkins Tax today to find out more. Here at Joe Cooper Ford, we know that for Oklahomans, a reliable truck isn't just a luxury, it's a necessity. That's why we have a wide selection of Ford trucks and SUVs to choose from, built tough and ready to tackle any job. Plus, we'll give you more for your trade-in just to get you in that new Ford truck. Whether you're hitting the lake, taking the team to the game, or just going out on the town, we'll make sure you're ready to go. And remember, we'll beat any competitor's price on a new Ford by $500, or we'll give you $10,000. Who loves you, Oklahoma? What does it cost to settle my IRS debt for good? As always, Travis Watkins Tax offers a low fixed rate and will let you pay it out over time. Call or visit Travis Watkins Tax today to find out more. Try to find
Back here, still just waiting on Andy Bass, the uh, senior night festivities post game. Give him a second here, should be ready to go. I think just about there, but all right. So there, so we've got it ready. So I'm going to send it down to Steve Chard for our post game interview with our player of the game, Andy Bass. Take it away, Steve. All right, I'm down here on the field with player of the game, Andy Bass. Pretty easy choice tonight. Andy kind of put the guys on your back tonight, and uh, I know you don't take it for granted going 10 and 0. It's not easy. Yeah, super proud of this team. I mean, we couldn't do it without every single guy out here. Put in a lot of work this season. It's all starting to pay off, so I'm super proud of these guys. Well, you know, I've been around a lot, Andy, and I've never seen any group that works any harder in the weight room. And I know that you and Charlie and, and Z and some of the seniors really set the tone in there. That was one of these. This was kind of a weight room game, wasn't it? Yeah, for sure. We had to have, you know, they were a very physical team, so we had to come out. They knew they were going to smack us in the mouth, so we had, had to just had to respond. A lot of moments this game we could have chosen to lay down, but it's all about how you respond, and, and I think this team really rallied really well, and it's a great win going into playoffs, for sure. Well spoken, like a true quarterback, and you know it, Andy, this is kind of our third season. We have our preseason, we have a regular season at Heritage Hall. We, we call it a four-week tournament, and uh, so what's the mindset going into playoffs? Uh, just taking it one week at a time. Nothing changes, really. Every single week we try to prepare the exact same. So, you know, I know I'll be in my film starting tomorrow. I'm sure all these other guys will. We're all really fired up after this win. Absolutely. Thank you, Andy. So, Charger fans, buckle up. As we said earlier, Season 3 starts next week here at home at Pop Murray versus North Rock Creek as we try to grab another gold ball here at Heritage Hall. Until next week, I'm Steve Charbon, my partner Max, player of the game, Andy Bass. Way to go, Andy. Proud of you. And we'll see you next week here at Pop Murray. Thank you, folks.